Let me stop the recording. Okay. All right. We're all set. So being after seven o'clock on April 8th, uh, 2020, we'll get the conservation committee meeting going. This is obviously a unique situation we've got. Um, Chuck has kindly set this up. He's done a lot of hard work to, to keep this moving and going forward and make it so that we can have some sort of semblance of an organized meeting here. Um, at, before we start, he's got a little uh, thing to go through and how this meeting is going to go, um, the expectations that we can have and, and how the process uh, can go to, to help make this smoother. Chuck. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Chuck Taroni, the Reading Conservation Agent. I'm looking to my right because I'm reading off another uh, device here. Uh, consistent with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and allowing us to adhere to social distancing requirements during the COVID-19 crisis, this town of Reading Conservation Commission meeting is being held virtually via Zoom and audio and video participation. The commission, the Conservation Commission applicants or their representatives and the public at this meeting. Um, at this time, I would like to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on tonight's agenda are present and can be heard. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mike Flynn, Conservation Chair. Here. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Present. David Panette, Commissioner. Here. Uh, Robert Hayes, Commissioner. Carl Ciccone, Commissioner. Here. Martha Moore, Commissioner. Here. John Sullivan, Commissioner. Here. Uh, Nicola Mazur, Associate Commissioner. Sorry, here. Tay Evans, Associate Commissioner. Scott Keefe, Associate Commissioner. Here. Applicants or representatives on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative when I call your name. Um, let's see. Allison Milliman. Here. Thomas Wise. Here. Ryan Percival. I think Ryan's somewhere. Matt Devlin. Here. Jesse Demio. Here. Is there anyone else participating tonight in this meeting? Please state your name and affiliation or address. Uh, Rick Devanner with AECOM. Okay. As stated, this open meeting. Uh, this meeting of the Reading Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with the Governor Baker's Executive Order 17 on March 12th, 2020 and House Bill 4598. Due to the current state of emergency in this Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus, in order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the Town of Reading has been advised to uh, and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. As such, the governor's order suspended the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physically, physical locations. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find at the uh, State House, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the uh, web address, uh, allows the public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as um, reasonable public access is afforded to the public and can follow along um, with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. Because of this meeting includes several public hearings the commission will allow for active real-time participation during this hearing, um, uh, portions of the meeting by telephone or video. For all meetings, 
The Commonwealth of Massachusetts is convening by telephone and video conference via Zoom as posted on the town website identified, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded at, <clears throat> as the meeting facilitator, I will be the only participating participant sharing my screen. Some attendees may be participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be available to see you. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. All of the material on this meeting are available on the Conservation Division site, and I recommend that the conservation members and the public follow the agenda as posted on the uh, Town of Reading webpage, unless otherwise noted. However, because however, because this meeting is being conducted remotely, I advise applicants and in particular that the commission cannot discuss or consider documents which are not previously posted. Uh, information may, however, be presented orally. Similarly, members of the public are encouraged to provide written public comments, but should understand that not all participants nor all commissioner members will be available to see written comments during the course of this meeting. Before we get started, before we get to the agenda, I am going to cover some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of business to ensure accurate um, meeting minutes. Mike Flynn, the commission chair, or Chuck Taroni, the conservation administrator, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair or the conservation administrator will go down the line of commissioners, inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold comments or questions until your name is called. For any response, please wait until the chair or conservation administrator yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. After the commission makes remarks, and these have been addressed by the applicant, the chair or the conservation administrator will afford public comments as followed. The chair or conservation administrator will first ask the members of the public who wishes to speak to identify their names. Once the chair or conservation administrator has a list of public comments on the chair, uh, the chair will call on each by name and afford four minutes for any comments. The applicants may be, requ uh, may be requested to respond by the chair or the conservation administrator. After public comments, the chair or conservation administrator will once again go down the line of commissioners, inviting each by name to provide any further comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Finally, each vote will be taken during this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. For anyone who speaks during tonight's meeting, please remember to mute your phone, computer, when you are not speaking. You can also turn off video on your device if you prefer. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps uh, generate accurate minutes. Mike, can you please now review the minutes? Oh, minutes are actually right. at the end of the meeting, but Mike, can you start where it says uh, your name? Tonight's agenda. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you very much, Chuck, and welcome to tonight, tonight's commission meeting. I, I just, before we start, I again want to say, you know, Chuck has clearly, you can see from that, put in a lot of effort to make sure we keep this moving. I, I thank him for his efforts. You know, a lot of people in town are, are helping to try to keep this process going so we don't have projects sitting. Um, it's, it's taking a lot of work to, to learn, um, make sure we're making the right decisions, but um, I'm glad we can move this forward. The, the first item on tonight's agenda is the 339 transmission line right of way, North Cedar Swamp. Um, this is a notice of intent for a transmission line right of way. Um, uh, and I'll summarize the notice of intent from the meetings. Just for reference, you can find this, the, the minutes on the town website. Um, 
after after which we go through the summary. Travis Yander will, will speak. Uh, Travis of BSC Group presented the application to conduct geotechnical solar borings for the purpose of engineering design and future work on the transmission design at our two meetings ago. Um, the proposal is to drill two soil borings at structure 95, which is located between Seminole Road in Linfield and Hazel Street in Reading. Each boring will be four to six inches in diameter, two square foot area for uh, EVW will be temporarily impacted for the borings. Um, and there will be about 19,000 square feet of temporary construction matting used to access the site. New England Power plans to follow Mass DEP BMPs, including back drilling the holes with the existing soils, erosion control, sediment control. Uh, the boring should take only about one to two days, and the matting will, may need to remain, remain in place longer if they need access to other sites through this location. Uh, those other sites, uh, I recall, were, were not in the town of Reading. Um, the, the commission requested a, a condition that potable water be only fluid used for drilling. And the commission closed the hearing on March 11, 2020. This is notice of intent 270-0729. Um, does any of the, of the commission members have any further questions internally on the project? The, the meeting was closed, but we can speak as a group. I'm just running through the um, plans and the maps that were presented to us um, by Travis. And I know that uh, Allison from BSC is here tonight. Chuck, can you just clarify? So this was, uh, th this was closed. So we was closed. Be, uh, so if there's we were just waiting on getting a uh, notes of intent or order of conditions written. Yes, and the order of condition is written, but unfortunately there's no mechanism to get it signed at this point. I hope yeah. within 20 days, I'm hearing that there's something in the works at the State House, um, and, um, but it is written and um, with a vote of the affirmative, I could have that on the shelf to, uh, to move forward. But I, it's, it's not too late to put in additional conditions if someone had done some additional research on this. This is the time that we can speak amongst ourselves and, and uh, mention what we're, what we're concerned about. Um, again, I think this is, this is the spot where it comes through Reading, right here at the top, so. Um, that's, that's Linfield, Chuck. So this, is, this is this not is us Linfield. right here? That's correct. So if you go up to the, the page above, that's the, uh, the area that's jurisdictional to the, um, the town of Reading. So okay. those are your, um, your town lines. So it's a very small slitter of the right-of-way that actually does cross through the town of Reading. Mm -hmm. But we provided the access point showing um, the adjacent towns just to provide context for the project. So do I hear any other concerns or comments from the members of the commission? Here, none, Chuck. Uh, do so? Can we make a motion? I mean, if, if yeah, you're, you're asking for a motion from the commission, and we already have a motion to close. So we'd like to have a motion from the commission regarding the 339 transmission line. Would a commissioner like to? Um, would a commissioner like? To Make a motion. Is there a motion to motion to uh, um, issue to issue the order of conditions? Dave Panette makes a motion to issue the uh, order of conditions for the three thirty nine transmission line. Do I hear a second? Mike. Go ahead, Anika. Sorry, I, I I just want to. I had raised my hand when you were asking for questions sort of as we discussed. Um, I just wanted to add before we go to this, I just wanna repeat what I said at the last meeting, which was um, a concern regarding spills from uh, the heavy machinery as they progress through these sensitive areas. Um, and um, I had 
talked about maybe putting down some plastic sheeting. I'm just, this is not new information. This is something I said at the last meeting. Um, plastic sheeting to contain any potential hydraulic leaks from the drilling equipment. Um, nobody plans for those. I mean, nobody intends that those accidents and spills happen, but they do occasionally once in a blue moon happen. And I just wanna make sure that this project is prepared for that eventuality. We'll make that a commission uh, a condition on the order. And I'd like to second the motion. Great. Uh, so we're going to do a roll call vote. So I'm going to just run down the line. Uh, Chair, I'll, I'll um, vote affirmative on, on this. Anika? Affirmative. Dave? Affirmative. Carl? Affirmative. Martha? Oops, sorry, I didn't get you there, Martha. Thank you. Uh, and then John? Affirmative. All right, that's, if I could do math, six. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so Chuck, I, I guess I just have one follow-up question. Is, is this contingent on finding a way to get signatures? Um, I, th I think that'll happen. Uh, we'll, okay. I, I'm not sure. I, Okay. And I don't know if uh, Allison has, I mean, I think now that we've, Allison, do you know any more about how signatures happen on um, our paperwork? Um, I have heard that there is an, there is an e-signature um, authorization that, that's being used. Um, but I, have, I haven't um, received any more information from other commissions on how that actually is implemented. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so, so somehow we'll, we'll be able to issue this within 21 days. I don't, I don't think that's an issue. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll figure something out. I mean, I get some, um, and that's what I heard. I heard there was an e-signature, so let's see what, see what oh. happens. The town council will update us. It's usually twice or so a week. So, okay. Thank you, um, Yeah, thank you, Allison. So uh, that's closed and issued, and uh, we're on to the next agenda item. Okay. Thank we'll you all. Have on. a nice evening. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. We'll, we'll move on to our next agenda item. The item is uh, 270 0727, 259 267 Main Street. This is a continued public hearing. Um, the applicant for this project has requested that this hearing be continued uh, to the commission's five May, May 13th, 2020 meeting. Um, do I hear a, a motion to continue the public hearing to May 13th? So moved. Dave Pinnett moves. Martha Moore seconds. Chuck, did you get that? I got the, I Martha said her name, so I didn't have to, <laughs> so I didn't have to. Uh, now you're That's gonna right. run down the roll call vote. <laughs> yeah, so Mike Flynn, affirmative. Anika? Affirmative. Dave? Yes, yes, affirmative. Carl? Affirmative. affirmative. Martha? Affirmative. And John? Affirmative. All right. Great. Moving right along, we'll continue on to Notice of Intent 270-0728, Zero Haver Street. This is a continued public hearing on a Notice of Intent filed by Mark Hall. Uh, the applicant for this project has requested the hearing be continued to the Commission's May 13th meeting. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to continue uh, 270 07 280 Havel Street until the 513 2020 meeting. 
Uh, that was Dave Panette making that motion. Yes. Uh, second, Carl Ciccone. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Mike Flynn, uh, affirmative. Anika? Affirmative. Dave? Affirmative. Carl? Affirmative. Martha? Yes. And John? Affirmative. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to our next agenda item. This is a determination of applicability for 2020. Is, uh, is it really 2021? Wait a minute. 30 Glenmere Circle? There's no, no number yet. Yeah, it's a determining determination of applicability. So it's we set the number. So it's, it's the first one first for one. this year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, this. This meeting is going to be continued in accordance with Governor Baker's Executive Order Number 17 of March 12th, uh, House Bill 4598 to the Commission's May 13th, 2020 meeting. Uh, do I hear a, a motion from the Commission? I move we continue the determination of applicability to 2020-130 Glenmere Circle to May 13th. Uh, Anika Scanlon makes a motion to continue to May 13th. David Pinnett seconds. All right. Uh, Mike Flynn, for chair, is affirmative. Anika? Affirmative. Uh, sorry, David. Affirmative. <laughs> Carl? Affirmative. Martha? Affirmative. And John? Affirmative. Great. All right. Next on the agenda, we'll move on to 181 South Street. And this has yet to get a DEP, DEP number. Um, this uh, Chuck will summarize the notes of intent for 181 South Street, which was posted on the Conservation, Conservation Division page under the current projects. Um, you can find all the documents at that at that site. Um, uh, after Chuck summarizes the, the project, Thomas Wise, the applicant for the most intent, will speak and present the project. Chuck, go ahead. Sure. Uh, and like Mike was saying, if anyone who is listening or wants to see this in the future, you can go to the Conservation Division page or the Conservation Commission's page, which is called the Board page. And you'll find our current projects. This is uh, titled 181 South Street. So here we are tonight to open the public hearing on notice of intent filed by Thomas Wise under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, MGL chapter 13140, and or the Reading Wetland Protection Bylaw, section 7.1 for the proposed. For the, uh, for the proposed construction of an in-ground pool within the 200-foot riverfront. Um, uh, Tom, would you like to uh, say anything to elaborate on this project? Sure, I guess I'll start. Um, so Chuck, you have the presentation version up. There's also the other documentation that's been filed. Um, I'll walk through the presentation to start with, and then if we need to, we can refer to the rest of the documentation that's been filed. Um, so the request here, um, first of all, the entire lot that we're talking about is in the 200 foot range or buffer zone of the riverfront. Um, you'll see a small picture of the river later on in this presentation. So pretty much no matter what I want to do in my backyard has to come before you in some way, shape or form. Um, so what I'm asking for here is the ability to install an in-ground pool, um, which will be on the left side of this picture, um, which actually is closer to the, to the waterfront. Um, but the, er the area that we're expecting as well has uh, less ledge. Um, I came before the commission back in 2014 and much of the documentation that I've shared with you is based upon the studies that were done back in 2014, um, showing where the waterfront line was, showing where the lot lines were, showing where the 100 foot line was, showing where the 200 foot line was. Um, and we've overlaid with that, um, or we've given another plan that shows where the pool will be. 
Um, so you kind of have to overlay them together to see the impact and see how the pool, the 100 foot line essentially is gonna cut the pool in half, um, more or less. Um, either way, we're well outside the 50 foot uh, line that's necessary according to the state regulations. Um, but we are here because we're inside the 200 foot line. Um, as part of this plan, um, Chuck, if you'd scroll to the next page. Um, this is the left-hand side of the yard closest to um, the water, the, the riverfront area, quote unquote. The two trees there on the left will be removed as part of this process, A, because we have to bring the trucks in to do the digging, um, but B, because that section also is gonna be part of uh, the pool decking, the patio around the pool. Um, so that, that area there is gonna essentially be uh, a pool decking side. We move to the next slide. Um, so this, this picture here is pretty much showing the majority of where the working area is. Um, I'm cutting up a little bit, so if you guys can't hear me, please let me know. Um, the, the stakes that you see in the ground are markers for where the pool will be. The one closest to the picture is essentially where the five foot line is from the patio. And then the, the three orange ones in the distance are central markers within the pool. It'll be a kidney sized pool, kidney shaped pool, 24 by 40 is the, is the uh, request. Um, and then you can kind of draw yourself along the lines. There's various different other little markers around the picture as we go. Another key point from your perspective um, is the left hand bundle of bush slash tree um, where the red arrow is pointing. Um, we're anticipating cutting that to the stump not fully removing it, but cutting it to the stump because that bush last tree essentially is suffocating the tree and it's more or less in pretty bad shape. Um, so we don't want that to fall over the pool or knock over the future fence, which would be a six foot fence uh, going up against that, that space. Um, Chuck, if you go to the next line. Um, now we move a little bit further right into the into the yard um, and you can see a little bit more of the markers as you go around. Um, but as we go further, we're going to see that less of the area of the yard is being impacted by the pool. So we're essentially going to have about a third to a half of the yard uh, being pool space and the other two thirds to half being grass less yard space for the kids and the dog. If you go to the last the next slide, we'll show the far right. And that's the other boundary of the yard, um, that fence over there. There's the actual lot line goes about a half a foot past that fence over there. But if you re review this, the um, overall materials presented, there's about 52 feet from that to the overall side. Um, now, if you go to the next slide, Chuck, we start to get a little bit better picture of where the riverfront is. So if you refer to the first, um, the second slide where I showed the left-hand side of the yard, this is the fence on that left-hand side. Um, and you can look down across my neighbor, my neighbor's yard, which is also a full yard. Um, and you can see in the distance, the, the quote unquote river. Um, river is a very liberal term here um, as it's a very slow moving stream at most and sometimes almost dry, but technically it's a river through the different survey materials. Um, move to the next slide. You can see a little bit better picture of it. So there you can see it now um, a little bit better, but again, you can also see the full yard of my neighbor that's in between me and there, um, demonstrating quite a bit of buffer between the rougher, the, the river and my yard, and also making it pretty clear that you're outside the 50 foot, 50 foot spot that it would be necessary from the greater state regulations. Um, the few next slides are really just other pictures of the river way in the distance through various different trees and bush and whatnot. Um, not much to talk about per se. That, that one on the left, the tree kind of on the left there that the arrow's going through, that's the bramble bush of, of trees that have suffocated another tree that would be part of the takedown process as well. And then if you go to the last slide, you can see about out, almost out the back of the, of the um, yard, the river is quite far out there um, from what we're talking about. Um, so, you know, the, the request here is to be able to put the, the pool in as, as discussed, and then put the um, appropriate decking around. The pool will be a saltwater uh, chlorinated pool. Um, it'll have the, the appropriate um, filter that's necessary. Um, maybe we can, this is actually, if we look at this, Chuck, this is a good one too. This is the actual you know, dimensions of where the pool would be. This is the house as it is now. Um, 
And the other other one, which I think Chuck is the next one, if I remember in the order. Uh, so if you go get, go down the next page. No, oh, it's uh, is this is one? something I took off myself. So is it the? Oh. Okay, uh, so there. Oh yeah. See, if this works for you. He's a. The next okay. two are just pictures of the pool. Okay, so these these are the dimensions of the pool as it is. Um, if you re refer to the materials that were presented as part of this from a package perspective, um, you can also see the plot plan as it was documented in 2014. And that plot plan is the one that shows the lot lines of and the 100 foot and 200 foot buffer lines that would cut through the pool as previously mentioned. Um, so I can pause here and ask answer questions. See it. There you go, Chuck. That's the one I'm talking about. So um, you scroll up a little bit because you're a little off the screen. They, there you go. So the on the left hand side of this screen here, that that line that kind of jigs and jags, that's the quote, that's the river um, that goes across the entire property line essentially that we're talking about here. Um, you then have the 100 foot line cuts. If you look at the top of the screen where it says lot area 23996 upside down, just to the right of that, is the 100 foot line. And if you follow that 100 foot line down, you will see that it cuts right through the yard and the stone wall to the left of it is just on the other side of the white fence that you saw in the previous pictures. So you'll see that it pretty much cuts right through the middle of the pool as we're talking about it. The house that you see here in this picture is not the house that exists now. This is the house that we were planning to build, which you know is better represented in the previous previous slide but we're trying to save money, not spend so much um, by doing this and hoping everybody can understand what we're looking at here. Um, and then the 200 foot line literally goes all the way to the far right corner of the property and shows that the entire property essentially is in the 200 foot um, buffer zone appropriately. So that's why when you see in the filings that you know all 23,996 feet are within the 200 feet, that's what we're talking about here. So. Um, again, I'll pause here and open open the door for questions as there may be. All right. So thank yeah. you, Tom. Uh, what I'll do is I'll open it up to comment from the commission. What I'll, to try to keep this orderly, I, I'll, I'll just kind of go through the list and offer uh, time for commission members if they've got comments uh, to or questions to ask them. Um, you know, certainly if, if you think of something after the, after I've gone through your name, try to try to get my attention. Uh, Anika, do you have any questions? I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so I'll just, I'll just go ahead. Um, the project narrative says that two trees are going to be cut. Um, I understand that Bramble that grouping of small trees, you know, is, I guess I'm wondering how you counted, you know, what were you thinking with, were you calling that collection like one tree? So I'm, if you go back to the slide then Chuck, the two trees that I, I consider being cut because of looking at the, um, you go to the second slide in this, in this one, Chuck, if you don't mind, um, the, Keep going all the way back to the beginning. Second one all, yeah. The second one all the way at the beginning, yeah. That one right there. So the, the, the tree on the left um, is a single tree. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's a single tree. And then the tree on the right um, with the second arrow is a single tree. Those are the two trees that will be cut and removed from stump all the way out um, as part of the construction. The, the cut to, to stump and not removed uh, Annika is the the bramble bunch, um, which shows up in the next slide. Um, so I treated that that bramble bunch as one cut and removed to stump, which if I read through your your tree cutting regulations was a different thing as long as I left it at stump versus if I pulled it out altogether. Um, now I'm happy to be corrected in that case if necessary. Um, but that that grouping of whatever that is uh, was considered one of in the in the in the uh, write up um, when it comes to cut to stump as opposed to cut to remove. So those first two are the ones that are cut to remove um, that I'm expecting you're gonna want me to replace or you know pay into the appropriate you know town uh, coffers for. 
on that last one, because the stump is left, my understanding of reading the, the tree laws is that wouldn't be impacted by that conversation, but I wanted to disclose what my plans were so everybody knew what was going on. Okay. Um, I'd love to have an additional conversation just about that, um, you know, cutting, cutting to stump um, in the tree policy. I don't know I if- I think Jen would consider that removal. Go, I'm sorry, Mike, repeat that, please. I, I think I think generally we've considered that removal. Um, yeah, I think what Tom is trying to, um, uh, so we, we asked that there's a stump left, but it's usually 10 to 15 foot tall. Uh, that was looked at as we were talking about trees and about um, this bush. It, it, you know, I guess, I guess another bush could be planted, or if it looks like it's big enough, two bushes could be planted in that in that spot. So, so Tom, on the on the policy, it gives three choices. One is to pay into the coffers. The other two is plant a tree for tree or two mm -hmm. shrubs per tree, and the third is to leave a stump for habitat. But the stump is supposed to be a significant size, 10 to 15, yeah. eight to 10, something like that. I'm not sure that's I also uh, feel like, allowable with a shrub. Chuck, I also feel like we've generally done that when it's in the wetland or like right on the wetland's edge, not necessarily something. Well, I think applicants have generally done that when it's not going to be a stump that's 10 feet tall in the front of their yard. So, yeah. I mean, it, and it was yeah. put in there just in case because trees do fall in from, you know, past the edge of lawn, and it's a great alternative. Yeah, cutting a tree okay. down and having to replant something. Okay, so I can do what you know. I can work with the commission on what is necessary there um, to see what's what we need to do. If you want to consider that as a removal, if it were to cut down the stump, um, as opposed to leaving it, you know. So leaving it that large, uh, I don't necessarily have a problem leaving it larger, except it's just a, <laughs> I don't know that it would actually re result in anything. It, it literally, I think it, it's more of a almost heavy, thick bindage as opposed or, you know, as opposed to a tree. Um, I'm not a tree expert though. So I'm happy to also figure out what the next step is that's appropriate for the, for the commission. Yeah, um, my personal take would be that that this is not really the intent of where we meant to leave like a 10 foot, you know, the, the 10 foot tall stump to create habitat. You know, this is not necessarily the location or the, the intent. So my, my preference would be, you know, if, if it's in the way, let, let's get it down and, and, and let's have a replacement or, or one of the other options for, um, uh, to, to, for compensation rather than try to make something out of that, that that's not really worth it. Um, I'll, okay. I'll let the if there's any if anybody else in the commission wants to speak up on that, I'll, I'll just open it up. <clears throat> Martha Moore. Go ahead, Martha. I'm just wondering. Um, I did go on a site visit and saw this yard, and but I didn't know about that um, bramble. I'm wondering if it is possible it's something like oriental bittersweet and that's why it's this vine that's choking the tree and you know might be uh invasive species that we want him to get rid of rather than a bush that we're valuing um so i don't know i'm just bringing that up as a possibility um i also just wanted to note that um everything beyond the fence is um currently in a natural state and then beyond the edge of his yard goes down quite steeply down to the river. So nothing in this property would be wetland, I don't think. I think it's all um, quite a ways uphill from the water. I'd like just to, David, David Panetta, I'd just like to add to that, Martha, that um, there's, there's a significant gradient drop between the edge of this yard where the fence is and just 
not too far after it down to the river. So this bramble as it is there, as it's being termed, is not in wetland at, right. at all. It's, it's uh, you know, there's a very, very significant drop off between where that bramble is and the actual where the river is. So it's, it's within the hundred foot, but it's not, certainly not within like the 35 foot or the 25 foot line from that, the river's edge. So, um, and I, I would, I would uh, also state pretty, pretty definitively that up on the slope there, that that's not wetlands. Anika Scanlon. Did I mute? No, we can hear you. Okay. I was waiting for to. I was on mute. Um, <laughs> Dave, you're absolutely, uh, Dave Panette, you're absolutely right about those setbacks and those areas um, concerning the jurisdictional wetlands. I do want to emphasize that the way I'm seeing this project, it looks it looks like a hundred foot wetlands buffer zone, but it's also that 200 foot riverfront, which also does have some performance standards. Mm -hmm. um, and we have issued enforcement orders for cutting trees illegally without permission within the 200 foot riverfront. Sure. Um, so um, if, if Mike, I'll turn it over to you. I did have two other questions. Go, go ahead. And you okay. Can, go ahead. Um, it, um, Ms. Rise, if you can comment about um, soil fill that you expect or anticipate to bring in um, or generate as a result of uh, putting in this pool. I don't expect to um, bring in any fill um, necessary. The hole itself, um, if you, Chuck, if you can go back to the, uh, the first picture on the um, PowerPoint type presentation, this one here, yeah. The hole itself will, will provide any other fill that is necessary to kind of flatten, for lack of a better way to say. There's a small dip down uh, on the yard to the left towards the, towards the two trees that we're going to remove. Um, so the plan is to kind of raise up by like a, about a foot or so using the, using the fill from, from what's dug out to flatten so that the rest of the pool deck is, is not at a decline the whole time as well. But other than that, there's no plan to bring any other, any other fill in or anything else to, to, that's necessary to flatten it. It would be whatever is, is, is coming out would be used as appropriate. Does that answer the question, Annika? Yeah, I just maybe um, just as a rewording, the way I understand it is you're going to take the soil material from the excavation and you're going to use it to sort of regrade localized areas in your lawn within that, that, existing fenced. That's my that. intent. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, just to be clear about the fencing real quick, Annika, just to make sure everybody's on the yeah. same page. Because of pool regulations and laws, the fencing that's there right now, the short, the shorter fencing will have to be removed and be replaced with six foot fencing. But the fencing where it is, is expected to stay pretty much where it is otherwise. That was my third question was, um, can you give me a little more detail about the fencing? So. Do you need more than what I just said or do you use that okay? Um, I, so I guess what I was wondering be, um, is of the existing fencing that's there right now, yep. can it can you sort of reiterate again where the addition where the replacement fencing is going to take over the shorter stockade you have? Yep. So um, the intent right now is to replace all the shorter stockade with six foot fencing. Um, as of right now, we're expecting it to look the, like the privacy fencing on the right hand side of the picture. Um, we haven't made any firm decisions though. So if we need to work with what the requirements are there, we can. Um, but we do have to also work with the building commission requirements of having the appropriate fencing around a pool. Um, so we just have to balance that appropriately. In terms of location, you almost, the expectation, um, what you can't see on the left hand side is next to that tree on the left hand side is the end of the driveway of the house. Um, you know, so you can sort of, I think you can see that in one of the plot plans, 
Um, so we can't really move the fence any further left. And as multiple of you have pointed out, there's a pretty steep hill going down, so we can't move the fence further out, right? Um, at least on the left-hand side, um, right? So, the, so the and the fencing on the other side of the fence as well is the stone wall, and we can't really move that very far, right? So the fence as it is is more or less going to go where it is. Uh, it might move a foot or two outside from a land perspective. I mean, within our existing land and within the existing finished land but it's gonna be, you actually can see the, you look at the stone wall and the back wall as well. The fence more or less follows the stone wall on the back in the picture here that Chuck has up. So it's just inside the stone wall, pretty much around the whole yard. Um, yeah, so Chuck, keep going up. Yep, keep going. So if you go to the top, there's a stone wall on the top. Yep, come down, come down, right there. So if you follow that stone wall, the fence is right inside that. If you follow that, the other stone wall, the fence is right inside that. And so we don't really have much place to move except where the fence is right now. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. All right, Chuck, do you mind just going down the list? Sure. Uh, does any of the members of the commission wish to make a comment on this project? Please write any comments after I call your name. Um, Mike Flynn? Uh, hearing nothing, I guess he doesn't. Uh, Anika Scanlon, any other comments? No further comments. Uh, David Panette? That's pretty straightforward to me. I don't have any problem with it. Uh, Bob Hayes? Not, Bob Hayes is not here. Carl Ciccone? No. Martha Moore? Just one question. I don't know whether we are supposed to consider um, permeable versus impermeable surface um, and whether that's in our jurisdiction out here at the 100 foot limit. Um, I don't know enough to know whether that's a question to be considered. Uh, so Tom, what is the apron around the pool uh, consist of? Um, we have two options we haven't finalized yet. Um, one would be uh, more of a, a cement style with pebbles type uh, pool deck, which would be more impermeable except for the connection points. Um, but those would be larger places. Um, and the second one is more of a patio like the existing patio, um, which would be semi-permeable, I guess, from the previous conversations I've had. Um, those are the two options we've currently been given and that we're currently considering. We were leaning towards the, the um, concrete one um, just because of the separation and that we thought it would look better so that you're not trying to match the other patio. But again, we haven't, we haven't committed either way there. And if the commission needs something in particular, we can work around those. Sure. So um, it looks like Tom, um, Tom Wise is going to use uh, the cement deck with the pebbles in it and typically outside the 200 foot it wouldn't be a problem and inside the 100 foot if it was natural it would be a problem but again this is this is a, a lawn area and um it's what we're losing is infiltration and i think that if you wanted to try to create some infiltration around the pool, that would be um, that would be acceptable, and that could be uh, an additional garden uh, to, you know, take on some of the water that rolls off the pool deck. Martha, well, does that sound like something you want to? Uh, get into a little bit more or did you have your own idea about how to handle the concrete around the pool deck? Um, I didn't have any ideas. I just was wondering based on previous uh, applicants with swimming pools, there was discussion about permeable versus impermeable um, decking and stuff like that. Um, I don't know whether um, out at the fence edge of the yard, whether we're gonna get more water runoff um, because of the pool decking. Um, I, it didn't look to me like 
it's really easy to put a garden in there, but you know, some of the other places we've been talking about swales to slow down the water runoff and stuff. So I don't know if he's if he's grading the yard whether you know something like that is appropriate, but I'm just asking the question. I have no opinion, no uh, uh, ax to grind. I just was thinking about the other people we've been hearing from and what they've been doing. Okay, I have, uh, yeah, I have, I was gonna say, I, have, I see Carl's hands up and so is Anika Scanlon. So we'll take Carl first. So would we typically ask for sort of a finished plan the showing some sort of diagram of the hardscaping and trees and shrubs or plant bed? Um, we have, yeah, we just really have a simple sketch of the freeform pool. Um, if nothing else, just to have an idea of the square footage. I mean, if it's just a true apron, it could be very minimal, you know, but if it's an apron with a, I mean, the yard looks like a pretty big area, an apron plus a 700 square foot patio. I mean, you know, that could be quite a bit of pervious. Sure. Tom, can you elaborate on your thoughts for the patio area? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the expectation right now is most of it would probably, on the left-hand side, nearest the fence towards the middle of the yard is expected to be apron. The, the left-hand side where the two trees are right now, that area was what we were thinking was going to be the extended patio for the pool itself. Um, and then on the, the right, and then up, up towards the patio here where you can see this first red or orange stick, that was more or less apron as well. Um, and then the right-hand side was gonna you know, just kind of merge it in to make it kind of look royal and meld into the existing patio. Um, so there's probably, um, if you look in the, near the, the grill area, there's, that's where the intersection of the patio with the house is. It was kind of gonna taper in to intersect with the, the patio of the house. Um, so it wasn't just a hard and abrupt line necessarily. Um, in the back, we hadn't quite decided what we were going to do on the back yet. Um, we could go apron in the back. Um, we probably will have like the, the the heat pump stuff, you know, back there on its own concrete block and whatever is necessary up there. Um, but to to Martha's question, um, I, the majority of the you know patio section is going to be in that that left-hand side where the two trees are that we're pulling out, um, which, you know, is currently the closest to the water as well. So that's the, that's the anticipation right now. Right now, what is the runoff from that mm -hmm. lawn do? Do you, does it head down towards the back? Does it pool up? Um, um, it had, I mean, the, the area, if you could zoom in, I don't even know if you can zoom in, but, um, it does, it does run towards the, like in between the two trees right now. Uh, yeah, if you go now move a little to the left, um, in between the two trees over here, that's generally where it runs to. Um, and then it just runs down the hill naturally right now. Um, it doesn't really pull up much. It just kind of runs down and runs away. Um, and that's where you enter the pool from, right? That side? Yeah, we would be entering the pool from that side. Exactly. So that's, um, you see what that little blue ball is essentially um, between mm -hmm. that blue ball and, you know, the, the, the next green spike that you can barely see that's coming up towards the patio is the entries place that's planned for the pool right now. So that's why the pool deck was planned to be over there is because you go off the pool deck and right into the entryway for the pool um, is the expectation right now. So maybe Martha, like you were saying, some sort of small planting bed right there to, to, to almost stop some of the runoff or slow it down could be a, maybe a good idea, a good spot for some greenery. I would say this as well, if you don't mind me interjecting a little bit, um, a lot of the runoff is because of the slope of the, of the yard, which won't be there anymore when you, when you fill in. Um, so, you know, that would be a different, different flow of water for to a degree as well that you know that slope that, that pushes it that way um, won't be it will still be minor because it has to be something but it won't be nearly as major as it is right now so we would probably see a different flow but I have if you guys want to ask for a you know a small planting bed uh, 
two foot or something like that. I, I don't have any any problem with that. In fact, my grandmother, my mother-in-law would probably want it because she can put some flowers back there or something else like that. So, so we could, you know, we we've come up with the understanding that um, there's a lot of patio and some sort of planting bed could um, be introduced into this project. We could approve the pool and ask for those plans before we sign off on this. We do get to sign off um, before Tom can actually have a uh, permit to use the pool. And we could just make a note in the order of conditions that we want to see a, you know, a better plan showing uh, what the planting bed would look like and the patio that he's expecting to install. And Anika, I know that you were, uh, you had your hand raised before, it was, it's down now, but do you have a question? No, I think the discussion went to my question, which was what's the size of the patio width, like how, and I, I wanted to get, um, I wanted to get some idea of the area um, of impervious as well. Um, and yeah. I think, and I agree with you, Chuck, I think it's, I think it's valuable to get that information um, in a written form or in a sketch and, you know, um, some sort of square foot estimate, you know, are you talking 10 feet around the entire perimeter uh, or are we talking an additional 15 foot bump out in a certain area so you can put, you know, lawn chairs. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, but with a planting idea, um, I'd like to see those details because on the other end of this, we've got to approve it when it's completed. And if we don't have some of these, they may seem like uh, extra details, but if we go back out, we can't say we've certified it until we check that things are done the way we've been talking about it. Sure. Agree. I agree, Anika. Unfortunately, I can't show uh, kind of a mock-up I have because it's, it's uh, it's not allowed to be submitted at this point, but um, we I have an updated version, and I will have an even better version, official official stamp version that shows you know the the patio and the and other other things like that. So I don't think it'll be a problem uh, if that's you know a condition of of your approval to fill, fulfill some of those things. I don't know that I'll have like a a pictorial view that kind of shows it as like a an, an architecture or landscape designer would do. I asked for that, but I unfortunately contractor wasn't able to provide it, um, but I can definitely give you an updated plot that shows where things are. Um, Chuck, if you go to the other picture, if you don't mind, uh, the other uh, pool plan, the other plot plan, the other plot plan, sorry. Um, 14? Yeah, uh, no, the uh, the newest one. Yeah, the John Russell one, yeah. So, I mean, if, if uh, walk with me for a second through this plan, if you don't mind, but on the left-hand side, where you see the 22 feet, um, yeah. there's, there's, about 18 of those, 17 to 18 of those feet are that, that downhill slope that are completely unusable. So the expectation right now is that, that you'll have about four feet from the, the pool to the fence that'll be just decking. That, and that's like the minimum that you can have around the pool from a walkway perspective. So that top side up there is gonna stay at the, the four feet side. And I'm hoping that you guys don't ask me to um, put something right up against that fence. Um, because it, there's not as much patio there. Now, if you come down, if he, if he brings his arrow down a little bit and to the right a little bit, you know, where the, the inside of the kidney bean is, is essentially where that, that second tree is in the, in the greater pictures. And if you start to arc out from there to the, to the, gar to the garage slash driveway, that's, that's where the patio, the majority of the patio will be. Um, in that, and that section there where you have the, the dirt where the trees are right now, um, that section we, you know, if we want to put the plantings type thing in there, I think we can, we can work that without too much trouble. And I think that's where historically most of the water goes anyway. So it makes logical sense to me as well. Um, I, I don't have any, just, any issues with that. Let's just check and make sure that where we are with, where do you think you are? So here's the hundred foot line. Yep. And is this the existing patio? So we're we're kind of in this area here. Yes. So the so you um, 
so stop uh, move up move up a little bit with your your just just to that tree right above your line right to the left so that tree right there in the pic in this plot plan is the second tree of the picture on the left hand side of the yard that's going to be cut down the tree to the bottom side of that right below that that one there is the first tree that's going to be cut down so those two are kind of the boundaries of where the patio essentially is going to be um you know in terms of the picture here and the stone wall is about the 17 foot mark um, that i talked about before um, from the 17 to you know the plot to the lot line where the pool would then be five feet inside that from an internal perspective and then you work your way around so you can see looking at that you've got pretty much 10 feet between the stone wall and and the middle of the 100 foot and the 100 foot line so that the pool will be about five feet inside the 100 foot line give or take so those two trees right there would be the where the patio goes and they'd round around to meet the rest of the patio that you don't see in this picture anymore because this is the old picture unfortunately but that's the type of stuff i can definitely help to fix and clean up for your your final approval okay um i i don't see any other hands up and i stopped at carl <laughs> Oh no, Martha, was it? And then, so John Sullivan, do you have any questions? Uh, just real quick, so how far past those two trees are coming out? Does the slope start that goes down to the next yard? You mean the big one? Um, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's approximately three, three, about three to four feet. Okay. Um, so it, it changes depending upon where the yard is. So, you know, if you, if this picture as it is drawn has the trees that used to be there on the, if you, where Chuck's, where Chuck's marker is right now is essentially where the end of the driveway is. Mm -hmm. And the driveway goes up to two feet uh, and it's got a, it's got a retaining wall. If you haven't had a chance to visit the site, it right. goes up to two feet of the plot plan. So the driveway con comes right pretty much to where Chuck's marker is right now. Um, and then you have a couple of trees beyond that. And those trees are essentially on the incline um, or decline, depending on, on how you look at it. And then the two trees that we talked about before that he previously highlighted are inside the yard and and uh, not on the intense decline. There's a very there's a small decline as the yard declines to that corner, but they're not on the intense decline that goes right down to the uh, neighbor's yard. Um, Chuck, sure. actually, it might be good to see if you go to the um, the PowerPoint presentation that I sent. Um, and if you go towards, uh, actually stop at that previous one. And I got to move my picture because you guys are all covering that up. So, so those, those now can you zoom back out again? Because it's still zoomed in from the previous slide. Sure, let me see what we've got going on here. Okay, so if you can see behind the tree on the left, there's another tree behind the tree that's that's on the slope, John. Okay. Um, and then these these yellow flower bushes are more or less built into the slope as well. So there's a whole bunch of other bushes on the other side of the fence, um, which makes it very hard to walk, but there's about a, a, a you know, two foot, three foot walkway that you could walk back if you didn't want to get stuck by the bushes behind the fence to a little bit behind there. So, okay, and then so. the, the, the drop off, um, and if you go to the like second to last slide, you can see the third to last slide, you can see the drop down to the other yard. Okay, so we don't think that the roots on these trees are holding up the slope. No, I don't think so. Okay. Because there's other trees on the slope. And so, go ahead, John. That's, that's all I've got. Okay, uh, I had a question as we were discussing this area. How much of, can you tell us where the patio goes on this picture? Does it go out to that fence post? The, the plan as it stands right now is, is pretty much all of this green that you see here would be patio. This is almost a picture where the patio goes. I think in fact, I put that in the verbiage of the presentation. Um, and then if we, if, if we, as we replace those, that the white, the white picket fence with a, a white tall fence, if as part of this request, we, we have a small, you know, flower garden plot, then we still have plenty, we still have plenty of patio and that does provide a buffer as Martha's asking 
um, from a water runoff perspective. But this pretty much this entire area would be would be the patio because as you on the right hand side of this picture, if you remember the blue ball from the previous conversation, that's more or less the entry point to the to the pool. And the fence is not your property line. It's it's five feet away from that, down the slope. My the it's it's in some cases it's um, you know ten feet away. In other cases, it's seventeen or eighteen feet away. Um, it just depends as the property line goes. Yeah, so this if this is a you know an eight and a half by fourteen, so it's using the you know one, and I think it has the scale on it, but it, I think it's about um, probably ten feet in most cases, and then you, it bumps out to fifteen or fifteen to seventeen. So I think I think there's a lot of discussion about uh, this patio area, and. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a plan of the patio and we don't have a plan of what the proposed planting may be, but there's in the riverfront regulations, there's some mitigation that's happening. And this is the conversation that we're in. Um, what's the offset for that amount of patio and has the planting or whatever else you're providing for mitigation offset the amount of impervious surface. Um, so one of the things we could do here, and I'm just suggesting this to the commission, is that we could approve the plan, um, but we could ask for the applicant to come back with the patio and planting plan and um, approve that part when we uh, agree with what's going on. And if, and that needs to be acceptable with, with uh, Mr. Wise, but um, I don't, I think that that it's 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 a reasonable request, and we could. Our next meeting is on May thirteenth, and um, if you approve the plan, at least you could move forward with with uh, the pool aspect of this. Tom, what do you think okay. of that suggestion? I'm okay with that suggestion. Mike, Mike. I just go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. As I say, I'm okay with that suggestion. Um, I just was wondering from a clarification perspective, um, is the patio not included in the minor activities as outlined in 310 CMR 10-2 um, or is it or not? Um, and that's the only question I have. I have no problem bringing back that. I think it's, it behooves you to see that, um, but I'm just curious about that being an official portion of the approval. So the entire project is uh, within the riverfront. It's outside of the 100 foot from what I can see. And um, you could argue that it's, it's uh, a redevelopment project, I guess, from the, from the lawn and all that. But you still have to meet the standards as, um, as uh, much as you can. So the patio is part of the pool. It's part of this uh, project. It's not separated. In any way and mm -hmm. exempt, um, mm -hmm. so uh, you know it's also not a limited project. So it, that's how I see it. Okay, like I said, I have no problem, you know, providing some of the information. I was just reading through the regulation, and that's where I was confused because it's. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. The conversion yep. of lawn to uses accessory to residential structures such as decks, sheds, patios, pools, replacement of a basement bulkhead, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, pro provided the activity, including material staging and stockpiling, is located more than 50 feet from the mean annual high water mark, which will be very far away from that within the riverfront area, um, is part of the considered a minor activity from the state perspective. And I know, Chuck, you and I have talked about it, that the difference for Reading is that above ground versus in ground. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm trying to understand there. So um, I have no problem otherwise. I just wanted to make sure I understood what I needed to do and what the performance standards were to provide you with the appropriate documentation. Sure, so we make, uh, so the state asks that if we have uh, our own regulations, they need to be, I'm not sure if that meant you couldn't hear me. Hold on, Chuck. Yeah.
Dacham. Tom, can you hear us? Can you hear me? I bet his phone died. Sure. So, uh, Tom, what I was saying is that uh, when we do our own bylaw, we have to make our standards uh, oh, tough. Hold, hold on, Jeff. Are we still doing this? I, I can hear you. Sure. Oh, okay. Sorry. So what I was saying ahead, is um, when we have our own bylaw, one of the one of the things that we need to do is we need to make our standards tougher than the Wetlands Protection Act. And what you noted there under um, those projects is that we do not allow in-ground pools as a minor project. So uh, under the State Wetlands Protection Act, you probably could move forward, but this town has a bylaw. So that's where you're being held up on, on, on what you brought out. But I don't see it that you could separate these two projects. It's a lot of activity within the riverfront. Yeah. Um, and that comes into the commission's discretion. But every one of the commissioners can chime in if, if they feel like the patio is appropriate on this lawn and it doesn't matter how big it is and we don't need mitigation. It's, that's not what I'm hearing so far, but they could, we can definitely do a roll call again and go through that. This is Mike, I, I, I'd like to have a plan of what exactly the patio is gonna look like. I mean, I think that's important to the project. I think Anika said it best of, you know, that's what, when we're going to approve, we wanna make sure we're getting the project that was proposed. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, again, I'm, I'm happy Go to- Go ahead, Anika. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Sorry, Tom. Um, hold, um, I just want to emphasize, um, Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're looking at the ranks. I'm glad you're thinking of this. Um, one of the other pieces, um, is the riverfront standards that are inside of the Wetlands Protection Act. Mm -hmm. And one part of the riverfront standards is um, alteration of area within the riverfront. And I, Chuck, I think it's by property area, correct? So there's, it's kind of a, another whole set of mini regs inside of the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and I just wanted to comment on that, which is why we're talking a little bit more about impervious, um, yep. because it, it comes up in the Riverfront Protection Act, the Riverfront mm -hmm. Performance Mission. Standards, so. Yep. And, and just to make sure that everyone, this, none of these things are by right. They're all at the discretion of the commission based on each project. And that's why I said that I think the commission has asked enough questions to make me believe that they don't, they think this project needs some mitigation as far as planting and whatnot, and they need some, a little more information. Um, I think the best we can do in light of the situation and in light of the fact that our meeting is on um, May 13th uh, is to, you know, just allow or understand that the pool's going in and we accept that. And then Tom can feel like, okay, well that part's done and maybe can move forward on any, um, any work that has to be with that as far as scheduling and setting up the site. And then on the 13th, just get this last piece in with the patio and some planting as mitigation. And that doesn't have to be garden beds. It can be some on your property, beyond the fence, some trees, some whatnot um, out there to uh, first it's runoff, it's infiltration, and then it's habitat. Okay, so just as a um, order of operations there, I very much appreciate the flexibility the commission is talking about and Chuck that you're laying out there as well. Um, if, should I propose, should I send um, uh, updated plans to you for initial feedback to see if it's a reasonability 
um, thing to make sure that you think it would be aligned generally with what the commission's asking for um, before moving forward with any uh, patio installations. Um, but then if you think it's reasonable, can I move forward with the patio installations? Uh, really, I guess at my own risk, um, presuming that there's any further ask that may come out of that. So uh, I'll give uh, option B would be, we could uh, close and approve this order. We could write in some standards that, um, that we have to review and approve the patio and planting plan or mitigation um, prior to the patio being installed. Um, but, you know, we're agreeing to having that element in there. It's just what size is it going to be? And you, pro and you don't have to come back to a meeting. It's just something that the commission has to review and approve. So those are the two options. I don't know, Mike, do you want to kind of I, I, set that up? No, I, I mean, I think that that second one, what you just presented, Chuck, is in line with what I would think that I think that's similar to, like you said, many planting plans that we get on projects like this where it's not quite developed yet. And we, but we have this requirement that they come back in, that, that there is this middle after the fact, and that not necessarily even come back in, but, but that it, we receive it at some point so that we can know we're getting what in general we've asked for that to meet a performance. Yeah, the difference here is that we usually don't ask to review and approve, but we are adding that second bit with this one. The approval yeah. part is part of this. And I think it's important because, and you know, I'm not, I, I mean, this patio, although it sounds extremely large, it, it may not be given the amount of lawn that's out there. So. Uh, can I make a comment? I don't know. I, I don't see how we raise our hand here. I don't have a, Go ahead, see, Dave. a, a hand raised thing under me, but. Uh, it's on uh, participants. If you want to look at uh, participants. Yeah. And then if you click on that, you should be. I got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If I roll over me, it says mute and more. Is it under more? Maybe more. Yeah. No, it just says. Hey, you got it at this point. Yeah. Says, the... I just I just want to bring up it. it. There's a lot of things that's talking about planting plans and things like that. And I just want to throw out there that perhaps there's uh, um, a. Uh, Another way of looking at this, you know, when we're talking about infiltration that, um, especially adjacent to a pool, I really don't have a problem with someone putting a, uh, um, wow. a uh, concrete and, and keystone or exposed aggregate um, deck around a pool, um, especially when you have people that are running around the outside of a pool. Um, I've seen plenty of pools where people have uh, landscape stones and and especially in New England with freeze and thaw cycles, you get edges of those uh, stones come up and the next thing you know, people are stubbing their toes and you know, ripping their toenails off and things like that. And I really wouldn't want to see that happen, but perhaps there's something else that hasn't even been broached here is that around the outside of the pool for infiltration is that maybe there's a, a, uh, maybe a two foot strip of, of uh, pea stone that's are out, outside of the, the pool deck that would be utilized for infiltration and then perhaps maybe, you know, some plantings that are outside of that. Because one of the things is, is that you also see on pools is uh, when people put landscaping right up to the pool deck that, you know, the dirt in the, in the mulch and everything from the planting bed gets all over the pool deck, which then you're having another maintenance item. So if we're really concerned about infiltration coming off the pool deck, then perhaps we should have some kind of, you know, maybe something that makes more sense is to have pea stone around that pool deck um, mm -hmm. and then a landscape strip planting. Sure. So those are options that the homeowner can uh, come back to us with, but that's definitely another option. Yep. I think that we're just looking to review whatever yep. uh, Tom Thomas Wise comes up with and brings right. back to the commission. Uh, Tom, do you, do you think you could get that information together and um, I could place you on the May 13th meeting. I'm, I should be able to, I mean, I, the land, the landscape design company has kind of been non-responsive over the COVID related stuff. So hopefully, you know, somebody there can respond. I think that's the one, you know, 
bogey that's out there. I know the uh, the pool guy is is out building. He's called and he's asked. Um, but the landscape design company that you'd be probably wanted to see a reasonable design from um, would might be a challenge. Now I do know um, that the architect, you know, the plot plan guys are are working. Um, so if you don't need to see like a, a visualization, but maybe more like um, delineation um, or line markers or something like that, I can probably um, put that into a plan without too much trouble because I know they're responding. I know they're available. Um, uh, this is going to come from your landscape plan, the, your landscape company, or someone you find. Maybe someone can put it together at a garden place who has some expertise. Okay. But we're going to need the plan that you showed us that shows the pool. And then you could probably sketch in your patio, but we're gonna to have to see those planting beds and where the trees go on it. So we could compare it to what it looks like when you're done. And okay. we're, I'm, I'm saying you're drawing it on it. So modified by homeowner and professional landscaper. Maybe that, maybe that could work. And so just so I'm clear and make sure I understand what the ask is. On the plot plan, the other one, maybe the pool plan one, um, the John Russell one. Yeah, on here, you want to see some of that kind of drawn in, you know, where the where the patio is going to be, um, and then where maybe the fence show where the fence is going to be. Then show, you know, between the fence and the patio, or outside the fence, if that's what's decided. You know, sure. A and if more of an infiltration. Um, and if you water, put it together, give us measurements on it. Yep. So that we can compare it at, at the end of the day. I don't think it's going to be that hard to draw on the patio in that area. Yeah. A lot of things to tie it to. And then you can drop in some planting and some trees on that site also. So does the commission want trees or would we be, this is another kind of the conversation we started before. Yeah. So placements or something else. We're going to, that's probably something that I can talk to you offline on. I mean, okay. It's, it would just take a lot of time to design this tonight. Um, I think that they could generally tell you, you know, what they're looking for, but let's not design okay. it. Okay. Yeah, Chuck, I, I trust, I mean, you, you know our intent of uh, our, our planting uh, procedures. So, I mean, if you can work with them, I think that'd be great. Right. So if you do get a hold of your landscaper, I think that if you told them that we want enough planting to first handle the infiltration and then secondly to kind of offset um, the amount of patio that's being installed around this pool. So not one to one square foot wise, but it looks like there's opportunity in that yard to have some planting beds. So you, you could really work with that a bit. Maybe it's something that needs to be added to this plan. So, okay. Okay. I think at this point, um, if, Chuck, if there are any other commissioners Chuck, that I, have anything to say. All right, Mike, it's all you. All right. Um, if there's no other comments from the commissioners, I'll, I'll just ask if there's any comments from the public. All right, I'm hearing none. Uh, then do I have a do I hear a motion on this this item? We're looking for a motion to continue to our uh, well let me take that back. <laughs> We're gonna close the public hearing. So we have two options on the table. One was to, um, option A was to allow the plan, uh, the pool to go forward and, and to just approve it as we see it here on this uh, John Russell plan and, but not approve the patio or any landscaping. And option B was to um, just approve the whole project and, and ask, um, Thomas Wise to come back at our May 13th meeting with a plan that uh, Tom and I will work on uh, in between meetings to uh, make it uh, at least strong enough to support the additional uh, work that we didn't know about, which is that patio. 
And okay. so at that, we would motion to close an issue. Right. So do we make a motion to close the public hearing? And, and, so did you, uh, yep, you can make a motion. And, um, and suspend uh, approval of the project until the May 13th meeting. Is that your motion? I guess so, because I, I think at this point we want to close the public hearing. Let's so, start, Dave, want to make a motion for just one right now. Right. And if we want to talk so, further about the right. order, we can do I that. A, I, David Panette, make a motion to close the public hearing for 181 South Street. Second, Carl Ciccone. All right, uh, Michael Flynn, I uh, affirm. Anika? Affirmative. Okay, David? Affirmative. Carl? Affirm, affirmative. Martha? Affirmative. And John? Affirmative. All right. The, the meeting's closed at now, Dave, sorry, I, I think this is a, a good time. Now we can kind of weigh those two two options. You know, I, I guess I'm of the opinion that I have, I don't see an issue. I have, I think, I think I'm of the opinion that I'd, I'd like to, I have no problem approving the pool as shown on this plan, um, but with a condition that the the patio plan is submitted for review and approval. Right. But I'll let others speak up. So I, David Panette, make a motion to approve the pool project at 181 South Street pending um, uh, plans, finalized plans for um, pool decking um, and uh, landscaping around the pool decking to be so, submitted uh, May 13th by May so 13th meeting. Uh, let me uh, let me uh, restate that and let me and you just tell me if you agree. Um, you're going to make a motion to issue the order of conditions with the condition that uh, the applicant will return to our May 13th meeting with a landscape plan that shows the extent of the patio and sufficient mitigation to offset that additional impervious surface. Yes, so moved. I'll second. Do I hear a second? All right, Michael Flynn, I affirm. Anika? Affirmative. Uh, David? Affirmed. Carl? Affirmed. Martha. Affirmed. And John. Affirmed. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, I think we have. You. Thank hey, you. Tom, we're being, Tom, we're I, being I, touch yeah. mostly by email. Indeed. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Good now. luck. Thanks a lot. All right, uh, we'll now move on to, Chuck, before we move on, um, just point of clarification. Are, is, do we not have a meeting on the 22nd? We do not have a know. meeting on the 22nd. So the suspension of all the um, open meeting laws and the directives from the town has asked us to um, uh, move all the meetings from this meeting to May 13th. So there won't be one on the set 22nd. And that's okay. out of a uh, abundance of caution. Okay. From the thank town. Thank you. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you. It, it just has it's come up a bunch of times and I wanted to make sure. This clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, there's a uh, protocol that's out. It's still in draft form. It's going to be reviewed by the select board at their next meeting and that clearly says it but they they could change and and i'm not i don't think that we would 
have a meeting on the 22nd, but we would know that we would have a second meeting in May. So May. that's that's how it would help if, if they change that policy. But right now, for all the reasons I stated right. at the, be beginning of the meeting, so we're doing one a month. This is the step to do one meeting a month. Got it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you. Sorry. Got again, it. it's out of an abundance of caution from the town of Reading. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we're moving on to our, our next project. This is notice of intent uh, for track road near 70. Uh, this is near 74 track road. This is an opening of a, a, a public hearing for a notice of intent. Um, Chuck, I'll let sure. you introduce this hearing. Sure. And I just want to remind anyone who's listening to this or uh, viewing us right now that these all these plans and the notice of intent application can be found on the conservation division page or the conservation commission page board page on this uh, town website so all the all the material that's been submitted is is up there in the agenda um, for anyone to view so um, we'll now move forward on the next item on the agenda I'll summarize the notice of intent uh, for track road bridge replacement, which was posted on the conservation division page under current projects and may be found there for reference. After which Ryan Percival, uh, the, um, Ryan Percival, the applicant, or Matt Devlin, the representative for the no, uh, notice of intent, will speak. Open public hearing on notice of intent filed by Ryan Percival the Town of Reading Engineering Department under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Reading Wetlands Protection Bylaw, Section 7.1, to demolish and replace one existing bridge on track road. Minor temporary and permanent impacts are proposed for the land underwater and waterway. 100-year floodplain, 200-year riverfront area, and the 100 foot buffer zone. Compensatory flood storage is provided. This project can be found um, at map 18 and 23 in the right of way, lots closest to 18 and 19. The DEP file number is 2700729. Uh, Ryan or Matthew, uh, do you have anything you'd like to add or elaborate on this project? And I'll get the-, I'll get uh, the Yeah, Ryan Percival here, town engineer. I'll, I'll just briefly uh, give some background on this project and then I can turn it over to our uh, design consultants, AECOM, uh, Matt and I believe Rick are also available. Um, we applied with the state mass DOT under the small bridge program. Um, maybe back about a little less than a year ago. It was a competitive grant. Uh, we received over five, uh, $500,000 to replace a small bridge. Um, we applied for this bridge and, a couple, and two other bridges. Um, given that we went through some of our estimates, I think we're just gonna do this bridge for now and apply for another bridge in the future. Um, the issues with the bridge that are currently out there now, I don't know if anyone's done a site visit, but there is, some uh, deterioration in the decking. Um, there's some uh, issues with the uh, abutments and certainly some issues with the guardrails or they're not even to, to uh, code for driving. Um, so again, MassDOT approved this project under the Small Bridge Grant, awarded the town 500,000 to do this uh, project. Um, AECOM was then hired as a uh, certified design consultant from MassDOT. They've also worked with the town on, on demanding projects. And we came up with a design that would um, increase um, or at least meet mostly all of the stream crossing standards, which is um, the bridge doesn't currently do now. Um, also widen the bridge slightly to uh, widen out a little bit of the travel way. Um, right now it's, it's um, I can't remember what the width of the pavement is, but I'm sure Matt will tell you. Um, and then also upgrade the guardrails um, and bring it up to standard. Um, essentially, it'll be a split culvert um, clamshell design 
And without getting into too much detail of the design, I'm gonna leave that to AECOM. Um, another piece of this project would be to um, get rid of a sewer crossing that currently goes through the bridge and also is open air to the, um, to the stream. And we would relocate that down uh, track road underneath our blanket order conditions that we have for water and sewer to um, line road and get rid of that crossing completely so we don't have that um, potential uh, catastrophic issue in the future of a CSO or an SSO. Um, at this point, I'll just turn it over to, to Matt or Rick, depending on which one wants to talk, and they can go through the particulars of the project, can go over compensatory flood storage, and sort of the, um, the impact that we're going to have to the stream and the process that we're going to go through. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, this is Matt Devil from AECOM. I'm a senior wetland scientist at AECOM. And yeah, I'll just give a um, somewhat of a quick um, explanation here. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a replacement and widening of a bridge. The bridge is basically a culvert. It's a, an existing box culvert that crosses Walker Brook, which is a perennial stream or river. Um, as Ryan indicated, it's part of the Municipal Small Bridges Program apportionment. Um, it is a limited project, a maintenance and improvement of existing public road. Um, as a result of the bridge replacement, there is um, temporary and permanent impacts, as Chuck had mentioned, to land underwater, 100-year um, floodplain, 200-foot um, riverfront area, and the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, we are meeting three of the four um, stream crossing standards. The only one we can't meet is the, um, the width, the 1.2 bank full width. We have a 10 foot wide culvert and we need to keep it at 10 feet wide. Um, but we do meet the embedment. We're gonna basically embed the, the culvert two feet and then provide natural bottom substrate with sand, gravel, and cobble. Um, and so that'll be in lining the bottom of this box culvert. We do meet the openness ratio uh, 2.42, the general standards is uh, 0.82, and the optimum standard is 1.64, so we are 2.42, so we meet three of the four standards. Um, a small portion of the 100-year floodplain um, will have to be filled as part of this project, although we are going to be providing compensatory flood storage further down um, north on the other part of track road that's currently closed. We just don't have enough um, space where we currently are it's just it's logistically constrained by driveways and residential properties um, to, to put in that in the exact same spot but it is within the same river reach um, and I'll go forward with impacts and mitigation later so I just wanted to jump into like existing conditions um, currently now so we have right now a single narrow lane um, it's very narrow it's only about 10 feet across so it's very very narrow um, they're basically vertical walls beneath the bridge that contain the flow of Walker's Brook. So underneath the brook is the box culvert and the banks of that brook is basically vertical concrete walls. Um, the surface water in the brook flows northerly and it's about two to three feet in depth. Um, the adjacent areas around the bridge, um, there's some small narrow areas of trees and shrubs, residential property and driveways. Um, there is one red maple tree located in the project area, and there are four other adjacent trees, um, one red maple and, and three uh, black cherries. Uh, the bridge contains the sewer line, as Ryan indicated. It's basically um, about four and a half feet below the decking, so it's an exposed pipe that's going to be uh, removed. So that's a good thing. Um, and then, uh, so the... Uh, the bank of the river was flagged in October of last year. Um, so we're gonna be, uh, excuse me. Um, so the construction of the actual uh, culvert, we're anticipating that to occur in dry conditions. So basically we're gonna put it in coffer dams. Um, they're gonna be installed on both the up gradient and down gradient sides of the bridge. And then we're gonna install a temporary um, bypass pipe is the gray sort of dashed line that um, kind of goes around um, the, uh, I don't know if I can grab the point or anything, but it's the uh, sort of that gray to the right there. There's a gray um, like boxy type thing that goes around. So there's going to be a, a bypass and then we're going to have a, uh, a silk curtain at the down gradient side 
and then a, a flow dissipation at the outlet of the outlet of the pipe. Um, we're anticipating using compost filter tubes and straw wattles and or silt fence. Um, it's very tight and narrow in there. If we can get in the wattles, we certainly will. But the silt fence may have to be an alternative option just because we're it's very limited. This scale of the plan is one inch equals four feet. Um, so as you can see, the bridge, the, the big gray area, there's only 10 feet wide. Um, so it's a, even though the, the plan's fairly large, the scale is uh, is not. Um, I just wanted to, to let that out there. So basically, yes, we are going to be filling in a 100-year floodplain, uh, but we are going to be um, proposing compensatory storage further downstream. Um, we are going to be cutting vegetation. There is one red maple tree that will be lost from the bridge widening, and there are four other trees, including another red maple and uh, black cherries that um, that the black cherries may have their subsurface roots compromised. So we are proposing to cut them at this time. But if that happens, we're going to anticipate that they will be impacted. So we're actually proposing five new tree replacements on a one to one ratio in that area uh, up front, just in case. Um, also, in the, the commentary flood storage area, there's going to be some trees cut down as well. Uh, including a black cherry and two red oaks. And we're gonna be replacing those as a, on a one-to-one -one ratio as well. We're also gonna be installing some shrubs in that area as well, uh, in both, both, both areas. Um, so basically for impacts, we're looking at, um, for, for, for um, the land underwater, the permanent impact for land underwater, there's gonna be some fill for um, some riprap slope at the outlet uh, for scour protection. And that's going to result in um, 26 square feet is the land underwater fill from the riprap uh, that's going to go in there. The, the floodplain uh, permanent impact is 394 cubic, uh, 320 cubic feet, and we're going to compensate 394 cubic feet. So we're actually going to be producing more. We also have a, um, we did a, um, excuse me, um, we did a, uh, a a no rise evaluation on this, indicating that the floodplain will not rise significantly. And that's included in the full notice of intent as well. Um, we are gonna be widening the bridge. So there will be increased impervious uh, for the riverfront area. But the, again, this is a limited project and it's for the public benefit. Um, you know, um, the, the mitigation, um, I'll just go through that again. Uh, we are replacing the trees and we're going to be seeding the areas using a New England Conservation Wildlife Seed Mix and a mixture of annual rye as well. So we get the annual rye down ahead to, to stabilize the ground while that conservation seed mix sometimes takes a little while longer to germate and grow. Uh, we are going to replace all the trees one to one and install the shrubs. We're going to be planting in uh, three arrowwood and three high bush blueberries. In the in the media area around the uh, culvert, um, and that's really the uh, the the rundown of of impacts and mitigation and, and things like that. I I I found that um, very informative, but I but <clears throat> what I would like um, to have happen is to have someone go over all these areas again, and let's point to them on the plans, uh, just kind of use these plans to show where the uh, fill is going to happen and where the mitigation for the fill is going to, um, and I hope they're on these plans somewhere, but just to get the commission and anyone who's watching, um, you know, a better insight on, on what we should be looking at. Uh, so, <clears throat> whoever the next speaker is, or even Matt, if, um, if we could use the plans and point things out. Sure, so that orange line, um, there, that the orange line, that is the floodplain, elevation 84. So that's following the contour at 84 elevation. The pink represents the bank um, of the river. And you can see how it narrows down underneath the, uh, the bridge for the, for the walls, basically the vertical walls. And if you zoom in a little bit, um, let me get a little little bigger view here. So the cross hatching area is the riverfront area that's going to be impacted by. Um, it's going to be impacted, and then the width of the um, 
the road is sort of it's hard to follow. There's a lot of lines. I apologize. The uh, so basically, if you look at those guardrail type looking things, that's the new width of the road um, along there. And so the the um, the dark black pebbly looking thing is that uh, uh, rip wrap that's going to be going in the uh, river itself. Um, so that's the um, the 26 square feet of fill in the in the river uh, for the scour protection because the water's flowing out that way. Um, so for for erosion purposes, uh, the rip wrap's going to go in there. Um, so the gray, the gray area near those, um, that's the portion of the floodplain that's going to get filled. That gray pipe, um, that's like, um, it goes along the side, but if you just go right down with that red dot right down there, that's the pipe, that bypass pipe. So if you do, yeah, that's the bypass pipe there. And then the stipply color inside of the culvert is just the Temporary and permanent impact um, to the land on, for the for the river for the for the bridge itself. Right. Um, so because we're going to be uh, you know that's going to be dry temporarily for a little while, and we're going to be excavating it out. So that's just showing the temporary impacts of the culvert removal um, square footage there. Um, I don't know if that helps or if someone has another question. What a line <laughs> means. Um, and is there a plan that shows where you're doing uh, the replacement flood storage? Is that on this plan or some other one? So if you scroll down, uh, the to the next sheet is like a restoration plan. If you want to zoom in there, I can show you the plantings and the erosion controls. Um, so the plantings, the star, the star looking ones are the new trees that'll go in. Yes, those, and then the shrubs are the littler, the smaller, um, the, yes, um, yeah, right there is the, the shrubs that'll go in. Um, and then the cross hatched areas is the restoration using the seed mix, the New England, wild, uh, New England Conservation Wildlife mix with the annual ryegrass. Uh, so those are the restoration areas there. And um, the yellow uh, represents the erosion control barrier using the uh, straw wattles or silt fence combination. Um, and then the next sheet shows the floodplain compensation area. So basically that's further down on the next bridge um, towards the north, towards the rotary um, up by 128 a little if you get in your bearings. I don't, you've never been there obviously, but I'm sorry, but <laughs> I didn't know if you, if you knew. Um, so we're going to be um, slightly carving it. Yeah, so that's there, there are sort of separated, not too far away. It, it is along the same reach of, of the river. Um, if you just want to go back to the uh, that compensate, or yeah, if you want to look at that plan for a second, just to get your bearings. Um, so originally we we're going to do both bridges, but that's been taken off the table. So we're just doing one bridge. So we're going to provide the compensatory floor it, Compensatory floodplain storage up um, along that east bridge, we call it. This is the west bridge. Um, and if you go back to the other, the, the light set of plans there. After yeah, the I, now that I've got here, I just want everyone to see that here's where the work's happening. And on the other bridge, that half circle is track road. Uh, you can see it on this plan and you can see how it's clearly marked which where the compensation is happening and where the bridge work is happening. So there is actually a center bridge too, but um, it's the two outside bridges that the work is happening on um, for the compensation, sure. Yeah, so you want to maybe zoom in just a, just a little bit on that one, um, get a little better view of contours of things. So yeah, here we have the star Icon again, those are the three trees that are being cut. It's it's very kind of sparse out there uh, as far as vegetation. There's a lot of weed and, um, you know, not many shrubs actually. It's very invasive, a lot of bittersweet, floral rose. So we're going to be going in and actually improving with all the shrubs that we're proposing. I haven't counted them up. I think there's like 12 maybe new shrubs that go in, you know, five to eight feet on center um, just to, you know, jazz it up a little bit. Um, so yes, we're going to replace the trees one to one and, and plant it with shrubs as well. So we are providing it for incremental uh, flood storage here as well. Matt, 
Um, could, this is Mike Flynn. Could you explain the upstream area a little bit more and what's going on there? Because right now, I, I think you had described it, but right now it's like a four foot wide culvert, you know, two concrete walls. Um, you're opening that up. Is, is that, that's correct? So yes, we're going to be having to remove the entire box culvert structure. That basically the, the bridge is, is a box culvert, basically. And so we're going to be replacing mm -hmm. that um, because it's just stru structurally, the integrity is, is not worth it. And we want to widen the road. So yes, we're going to be re completely removing the whole entire concrete box structure and then going in and in reinstalling a whole new concrete box culvert structure in the same footprint, basically. Yeah, I can, I can show you the correct manner. It's a, the existing structure is, is was a cast, it's a cast in place concrete uh, structure that basically forming a, a box and uh, it's uh, <clears throat> 10 feet, 10 feet wide. Um, and, and actually we're, we're putting in the, the new culverts, as Ryan mentioned, kind of a culvert, uh, a clamshell type uh with uh, bottom U section and top U sections, and and we are we are slightly increasing it. We're we're increasing it to ten foot six. So, um, uh, we um, and then uh, and we're trying. Uh, you can see in this plan down at the bottom of the plan, there's an existing. Uh, there's actually f for about forty feet or so. There's an existing uh, concrete uh, channel. And uh, that's, it's that's what I'm walls, little retaining walls, and it's got a continuous slab underneath it. And we were keeping that in place. We're only removing enough of it to fit the fit the structure in, and and will also be the, the temporary bypass will be there and the walls afterwards. Um, and uh, the reason we're reasons we're using the the, the clamshell type uh, bonds is is to um, facilitate the uh, keeps the units uh, will be lighter um, and because we we do have uh, overhead utilities along the edge of road on one side and uh, so it'll, it'll be easier to uh, install them and it also it, it could be the contractor's option to once he gets the bottom sections in, uh, he could at that time place his two feet of, you know, replicating the, the, the bottom material that's in there now. He could, it would be easier for him to in install that you know, before he puts the top tops on. Could do it either way, but uh, that would facilitate and, and minimize the duration that the uh, bypass piping is in there. Once he gets those bottom U sections in, the, the by, if he prefers the bottom, the bypassing could be uh, removed. So, so I'll precast the wing walls. So those wing walls that are shown uh, that are parallel to the roadway, those are precast with uh, soil, soil anchors anchored back into the soil. Uh, no, down, just see the, yeah, right there. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, they're, they're in, in uh, probably about four foot sections. There'll be two sections in each corner. Uh, so uh, I think that's pretty much the only, so, and then the, uh, so the, the existing bridge roadway is, is uh, culvert is like 14 wide uh, with a 12 foot roadway, really small. So. Um, we're increasing this to a 22 foot roadway. So we'll have two 11 and, uh, and then we're, so th there is an increase, uh, a, a, just a small increase in the imp impervious um, area be because of the widening, but then you can see that we're, we're, uh, we're tr sort of transitioning, um, you know, back to the, the, the existing roadways approaching the bridge are, are, are wider. So, and what was happening is the current roadway narrow, narrows down to the existing bridge width. So we will just be making a, a short transition to the existing pavement. 
so uh, I'm Chuck, if you scroll down a little, yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah, that way towards the, <laughs> the down upstream end. Oh, or, 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 if you can stand this one, page. sure. This, uh, no, go back up to the last one. Go so, well, this is the last page here. Just, I just want to see the upstream side of this. Uh, this is what I'm not understanding of what's going on. Um, the, so that's the downstream side yeah, that we're upstream. looking at, right? Yeah, that is the downstream side, yes. Move, move it up, bring it up. It's at the bottom of the page. The Jeff, bottom sorry. of the page, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Can you see yeah. that or should so, I bring it in? If, if you could bring it in. So right now it says footing of existing channel structure. Yeah. It, you know, when I, when I see what's going on out there, it, and I think you talked about this, it's like, and I, I think you show this on a later plan, but it's two concrete walls that are only like four foot apart, correct? This is... Well, they, they, well they're about 10, it's about 10 feet also. It, um, oh, it is. It, yeah, it pretty, it pretty much matches the existing color. And, and that's one of the reasons also why we didn't make it wider uh, because because trying to, you know, maintain that transition. So, so we have a, you, you can see, uh, so with the solid black lines uh, is going horizontally across and we call it, it says coffer dam for water diversion, but that, that's kind of the, the, the tie in. And, um, and, and there's a, there, there's a section that we can go to, but um, the, the culvert is the box culvert, the main bridge structure, is is going to be deeper than the existing. The existing structure had like uh, kind of like a L a T type footing, uh, and and then the footings were connected with a, a another concrete slab. So the existing structure did did have a a full slab across, but um, but we're going deeper to maintain to get that two feet that we want. So we're, we're actually going a little bit lower than the, this existing channel structure. And so from the face of the bridge where the wing walls are up to the uh, existing channel structure, we're, we're going to make that transition with a, with a concrete, uh, cast in place concrete slab. And there is a section on the plans here that cut through that can, can uh, go to show that. Do you want to direct uh, me to that set? Yeah, you, know, you want to scroll down. It's, it's in it's in the with the bridge plan. So you want to scroll down some, keep going. Is it sheet, the, the, is it sheet the seven and the eight other, there? Yeah, the other set exactly. And the plans are probably on. Um, about sheet um, sheet number fourteen or so. Which sheet is this? That's uh, uh, seventeen. I um, don't quote me on the exact sheet. I don't have it memorized, but that, that's it's seven of eight, Chuck, of the bridge drawings. I don't know what it's fifty. Oh, I'm I'm just looking at the full application. It's fifty three of one seventy two. Um, oh. Scroll up this one right here. Ooh. This one? No, one down. Yeah. yeah, seven of eight, sorry, one. Right yeah. This is this is what I was looking for. Okay. So, this so you're gonna so stop. Yeah. Not too much. No, this is perfect. So you're gonna saw cut the existing structure about four feet away from the, the bridge, slope it down. Um, what's the process like what's the process of that can like making that connection to the existing concrete um. okay well so the so the the uh the existing wing walls there's actually uh, are uh actually have an expansion joint uh that meets the champ meets this uh channel structure so okay. so that 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 will come out but they, they, <laughs> there could be some saw cutting uh you know there, there could be some other saw cutting involved but um but the um so that gray where it says cast in place channel wall so that that will be kind of 
so there be, there'll be a gap there. We'll, we'll have a gap there until they can get in the, the, the main structure. Okay, they set the, the, the culvert sections down and, and, and the wing walls. And, um, and, and then that difference in elevation, you can see between the, the floor of the, of the main culvert and the, fl the floor of this uh, uh, channel structure um, will be, it'll just be a cast in place concrete slab. Um, and, and act, actually they could, you know, I don't think that, that there could be some, a little bit of undermining there, but uh, I just, I don't I dealt with this uh, lots of times. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure the, the ground's densified, compacted, it's been there so long and, and uh, they'll, they'll just, they'll, they'll just pour the concrete so it goes underneath it and, and, and stuff. So, and um uh, um, okay, so you don't need to do anything to, and that's kind of what I was thinking is, is a you're you're excavating down below this existing canal structure, um, and 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 b is there any sort of dowel connection to to you know permanent connection? Is that an expan is that going to be in a, a future expansion joint? Um, uh, basically, what I'm concerned about is is a. I think you kind of hit on it, voids forming underneath this existing structure, be some sort of differential settlement or movement or what the connection looks like that could create some erosion or break at that location in, in the future. Yeah, I don't think, I, I mean, we, we, we are anticipating possibly putting dowels in uh, across, you know, across the wall, um, uh, the walls. Um, I'm, I'm not, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't anticipate that differential. Your, I understand what, you, what you're talking about. That that slab, that kind of closure element, will be done after the structures in there is is going to, you know, be compacted. You, you know, those kinds of settlement things is as good as the compaction that you get putting the structure in, um, and. And right, and the concrete can, if there's any, any voids, uh, there, there won't be, if there's any undermining, it's just going to be right at the end of that channel where, where, where it's cut. And, um, and it, they, they can put a flowable fill under the, the concrete could go right underneath or a flowable fill. So th th there won't yeah. be any voids. And, and, and the fact that that's, that structure has that uh, canal wall, canal structure, I mean that, that's a continuous that's a continuous slab that goes all the way across, and then the walls of the walls were built on top of it. So it, it's 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 very, and that's why I would put the slab back in to to keep that continuity of of the protection from. Uh, I, I mean, actually, this on this side, it, there's really no no issues with scour. Um, you know, if if I mean we're down below any scour depths anyway, but with the with the main box, but. But you, you, you're, you're very protected there with that slab. So, yeah, the flow, the flow what's the what's the slope of that drop? I don't know exactly. I mean, it kind of looks like a, a one to one. Mm -hmm. The the slab. So you talking about the little the little filler piece? Yeah. Yeah, the the invert of the existing versus the invert of your new structure. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know it offhand, um, but it's it's to scale. So just kind of looking at that, it's a so it's a a one to one. So the the the, the channel, the the box cover, it's going to have, as you can see in the longitudinal section, it's going to have two feet of of uh, of uh, material in there, bedding, and. The, the, there's not that much in the canal itself in that canal channel you'll see so but but you know there might be there'll be there's about six inches of of uh of bedding in in in, in the structure now so whether it's been washed away over time or or whatever but um so it'll be uh uh you know when when everything's functioning here the, the bedding will just be um 
you know, a, a continuous elevation continuity all the way through. Yeah, there's a fairly slow flowing stream. It's very flat out there. Um, when we do our site walk, I have some photos too, if it's if you're curious on sort of what it looks like too, but. Uh... Okay. Uh, and, and then just from the, the standpoint, can you, because you talked about you know what this, the project is, could you explain to me a little bit the, this is in line with that, the construction sequence, um, you know, the, the, the version, um, you know, coffer dams, if, you know, if they're being required, um, how, how water in the stream is going to be managed while you're building this. So that, okay. Um, they, they could, uh, well, that, that bypass piping, uh, after, after they excavate on the outside of the structure, um, they basically it's an open cut, except uh, on one side we are, uh, we do have some sheeting. Um, if you, um, we do have some earth, so you can see some earth support where, uh, on the left side there. Uh, By the S in the middle of the road on the left side of the Yeah, road. that sewer manhole, which, yeah, on the other side, uh, the other side. The left side. Yeah, yeah the that, F, the this F. side, you can see the. Real faint, there's like a horseshoe U kind of looking thing in the middle of the road. Yeah, right there. And and we might straighten that out a little bit more, but but that's, that, that's because that sewer manhole is going to be removed. That originally was uh, that shape to protect the sewer manhole from being undermined, but. Uh, I believe that the town, because because we are eliminating the sewer that's going through the structure, uh, that structure can be uh, the the town will be removing that sewer before before we get before the contractor gets there with this project. So uh, so we don't really need to protect that, but we are going to maintain some some shallower earth support, basically to protect the driveway to to make. Uh, because uh, at the top of the top of that uh, sheet, there's a, a driveway right right there. So we're, we're, um, we're, we're you know we're, we're trying not to impact that d during construction and uh, for for access on the other on the other side of the bridge, the, the driveways except for that temporary gravel that would be an open cut. So you can see the temporary bypass pipe. Yep. After they excavate down, they can put that temporary bypass pipe in. It's basically going to be the same elevation as the as the existing invert right now. It's the same. It's the same elevation. So, what's what do you what's the requirements associated with capacity of that bypass? Um, you know, what's the process for blocking flow or, or where the current channel is? Are you are you going to have? What is it? Yeah. Mafia blocks that. Like, what's the what's the coffer dam that 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 bypasses the flow into that that pipe, and what's that pipe going to be designed for? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of means and methods, but but it could be uh, the, the water is not you know the water is like uh, well under kind of normal conditions, it's three feet high. It won't, I don't it won't be that high when they're doing this, but it, it could be sandbagging. It could be little porta dams um, that that will block off the flow of the water through the culvert, through the mm -hmm. culvert. And, um, and, um, it, is there a minimum requirement of how high the sandbags need to be? Um, my concern is, you know, a big storm comes through. Does the bypass have the capacity to carry the flow? Um, does the, that, that sandbag or structure, or um, uh, they've got those inflatable dams, uh, the 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 big balloons. You know, does that ha is that big enough to prevent overtopping, or is there a certain elevation we want it to be? You want it to be so that it does overtop and, and just gets by. You know what? What yeah, are the yeah, measures? Could, so 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 the 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 average the average flow is about five cubic feet per second. So the average flow. Um, mean, mean flow is uh, 
about three. It's it's, it's pr pretty, um, pr pretty, pretty small. Um, the the uh, 24 inch pipe um, that would be put in there is is good for about uh, a 10, 10 cubic feet per second flow, um, and and over a three month period of, of this construction, um, the, the historical you know the the probability of of uh, it getting to 10 cubic feet per second is is about seven. Uh, seven percent over that duration, which is like nine days. Um, so we feel we feel that that's adequate, and and there's there's, there's there's actually kind of low risk here because if if a flood were to come, uh, uh, you know, if, if they did have have an event, um, it, it's kind of a low risk to the contractor because they they could they could remove the you know it's, it's only going to take. Uh, a day probably but you know so say two or three days maybe but it really uh, could a day that they'll get the the u-shape the bottom sections of the culvert in okay so uh, and so once they have those in if if there was an event uh, you, you know you can just the, the water can overflow and 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 run right through so it, it's 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 a it's a low risk of, of that happening, but, um, and yeah, Rick, it's Ryan, uh, first of all, uh, I, I think it's important to note that this ideally we're going to try to be doing this during the dry season yes, uh, for obvious reasons. <clears throat> and again, what R Rick was saying, you know, without getting too much into means and methods of how the contract of bypasses, um, if it were to be, let's just say sandbag in the event that we have a, a catastrophic flooding event or a storm that's coming those can be pulled up right. you know depending on where they're at in their construction so i mean that's why it sort of means and methods they're, they're responsible for maintaining flow um and again what rick said is we anticipate this to depending on the delivery of the structures the contractors are probably going to um, do the excavation around the delivery so there's not going to be too much time in between excavation and placing of that bottom structure um, you know, they're not going to want to have an open excavation and have to maintain that bypass flow for longer than they need to. Um, but again, that's in means and methods and we can't really speak to that because we don't know what the contractor would do, but, um, I could just tell you for construction sequencing, they're probably going to coordinate this around the delivery of their structure. Okay. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it, Ryan. I mean, you, you don't want to set their means and methods, you know, but but certainly similar to anything else, you, you are able to provide minimum requirements of protection. To and, Right, and, your, and that's, that's what we're showing here with the calculations that they've done um, okay. as far as the flow of the stream, the time of year that we're, we want them to do the work, the coffer dams, and... Uh, in the specifications of what they need to do for the maintaining flow. Um, and, you know, we did show the bypass piping there, uh, which again is not going to be run with a with a, a, a generator or a pump. This is all by gravity feed too. Gravity. Um, which, which is not an impact to the neighboring, res, you know, to the residents. Um, I think doing this during the, it, it, the, the key is to do this during the time of year where we have drier periods. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess just from my perspective, it, because I, I think you're right. I think setting those, those precasts is not going to take long. Um, my concern would be obviously the, the worst case condition is you've got an open hole and a, a storm is, is coming through. Uh, and a, you know, even if you get precast in, in a short period, you've got closure pores to make. You've got connections mm -hmm. to make. You know, there's provisions that you can do to just say, well, we're, we're going to get rid of those sandbags and we're going to let this flow. My concern would be, A, not, not seeing erosion from areas that haven't been treated, that haven't been completed. You know, some, something that would essentially could wash this uh, a significant area out um, 
I think you can handle that. I, I think Ryan, you, you've got the right idea that from a seasonal standpoint. Um, and, and also just from a two week outlook on, on weather of, of when you, you actually do that excavation and placement. Um, I, I think as long as there's some provisions that, that people are paying attention, I, I think you can, my concerns can be alleviated. I just want to make sure that you're thinking about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when, when, when we draft those specifications, we can certainly put um, some language in there to say that, um, you know, that the, uh, the five day or the 10 day forecast sh should be looked at and used in planning purposes, yeah. um, you know, for scheduling or for excavation or whatever we need to do. I mean, that's definitely something that we can, we can address in our specification. I don't want to, you know, speak for Matt or for Rick, but I don't think that's out of the out of the question that I have to look at the um, the forecast. I mean, we're going to be monitoring the forecast for sure. Yeah. Okay. Ryan, <clears throat> Ryan, sorry. Uh, so I know you're talking about means and methods, but if the commission made a condition that they looked at the five or ten day forecast, <clears throat> then that's just how it is, isn't it? There's nothing it, that would end up going into, um, uh, that would actually go to the, to the contractor, right? If it was uh, a yeah, any, 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 <clears throat> any order, any condition that you put in the order um, would be followed. Um, yeah. You know, the, so the, the fine, they, they would be, they would, you know, I, I would, I would suggest that um, we would take a, a not saying that we wouldn't put a, we shouldn't put a condition in there. It's just that we'd have to look at it and, and, and put a reasonable condition in there and something that's not going to make the project unbuildable. Um, right. You know, if we get in, if we get into a scenario where we're looking at a 10 day forecast and, you know, we can't do work if, you know, if something, then we can't do work. Um, that's when you start running into a fine line of, um, well, I'm hearing this is a day project, uh, you know, to get to a certain point. And I know Mike is pushing back on that. So would we be look? We I don't think we would looking at ten day forecast, but a five day forecast. I've, I've, we've done these in the past in another town I used to be in, and we usually went with three day. So um, that's when I'm hearing yeah, five I three day, three days would be yeah. I mean, I mean that that probably is is fair. I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, the thing is, when you start getting into too far of a forecast, it's a forecast. You know, you you don't yeah. you don't know. You could you could be calling for rain on day five, and it doesn't come. You know, yeah. Yeah. and then then you're you're delaying the contractor, or you know, you could be looking at the five day forecast and they're saying, oh, there's no rain for till the seventh day, and it comes on the fifth day. So uh, it it's just one of those things that again, you just have to be reasonable with the forecast. But I I don't think that that's out of the question for us to put in some sort of, um, you know, uh, constraints or, you know, looking at the forecast. Do you, do you think so, Matt or Rick? No, I think that's, that's fine. Yeah. That's and I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do that wouldn't impact that. It's just when we get to that name structure piece. And the first thing they're going to do is, is is get their stone bedding down before the units go in, and, and even once once that's in place, uh, um, that that's going to give a lot of protection by by itself. But but they'll they'll be right on top of that with the, with the units ready to to go in. So it's it's, it's going to be a quick process. Right, and I I, I can't speak certainties here. I could tell you if, if I was a contractor, what would be happening here is I really would not be planning a lot of my excavation until I knew that delivery of that structure was coming. Right. It's just an, it, it's just to maintain that, to maintain the life, it's just a lot, you know, that's where your cost is going to be. So they're going to want to get that bottom piece in as quick as they can. Yep. Right. Okay. So, so Robin, I, just, I just picked up on something that you said, um, that structure, that bottom piece, is going to be on site, right? They're not going, right? or is, does that come in on a certain scheduled date, and you're planning for it, and it's coming down the highway? I, I can't, I can't speak to that. You know, that, that certainly, 
out of our uh, out of our control what they decide to do for means and methods. So, and then again, you, you're talking delivery, you know, back orders and things like that. So, right. is you know, there a we spot can put of town on language land? in there? Sure. What's that? This is I was wondering, a staging area. isn't there a staging area that's owned by the town next to this uh, on one side or the other of, of, of this uh, brook? Is that a staging area or is there another staging area close well, enough if needed? You know, I, I, I think they, the contractor would work something out probably with one of the larger parking lots that's not too far away. Um, okay. <clears throat> you know, we wouldn't want to keep too much too much on in and around that area because we do have some driveways and we don't want to really impact them too much. Okay. But there will be a probably, I would say there definitely would be equipment out there and you're going to probably have some stockpile of some sort of materials. But again, it gets really narrow at that, that area and... Um, we don't really want to be impacting too many of the driveways for too long of a time. Do you have to do all the work from one side? Uh, are, are trucks no, I mean, actually I, able to cross the other bridges? No, no, they won't be able to cross. So they, but yeah. they, they, they can have different things on on each side, you know. Uh, for different operations, yeah. And there is another way in we can, I mean, on an adjacent street coming in. Yeah, there's another way through, um, if you go up towards uh, the Cumberland Farms and then down uh, Line Road. So okay. there'll be one way into that neighborhood and then one way into this back neighborhood at the time. Okay. Uh, I, I've ordered enough of the questions. I, I, I'll open it up to if there's any other commission members that have questions. Anika, uh, I guess I'll, I can start with you. Yeah, um, thanks. Um, a couple, you know, there's a lot of detail uh, here. So I just want to hit on a couple of main points. Um, the size of this crossing are is um it looks like you know it looks like it's a it's going to expand the roadway so that it's going to be a, approximately twice as wide um but when it comes to the actual impacts to the stream channel itself are are we talking about roughly a one-to-one -one replacement are we based on your design, are we slightly undersizing? Are we slightly oversizing? Can you can you give me that idea? Well, the width of the, um, the culvert, you know, it's gonna be above the stream bed itself. Um, so there, I'm not sure if I'm following the question uh, correctly, I guess. Are you talking about the width of the roadway, the bridge decking itself, the culvert? Well, so the the existing culvert is it it lines the channels on the south side for an extended period, and then it lines the channel on the north side for the the concrete walls, and then the actual box culvert itself it creates its own area under that bridge existing right now. You follow? Mm -hmm. So yep. we're going from that existing kind of geometry to something that's um a lot longer um you know to a different geometry total in terms of you know maybe total shaded because it's going to be under the road um i just i just want to know if the dimensions of the replacement culvert are you are you sizing that replacement culvert roughly one-to-one -one, slightly oversized slightly undersized it, it, so, well basically the length. the length of it is is was basically established as the for a, a minimum roadway today standards mass dot standard <clears throat> which is the, the 22 feet um so that, that's really what what established the length and it and it and when you work that length in with the area of it uh, for the openness ratio, uh, we, we satis we're satisfying those requirements. 
Um, to, so it's not, to answer so your it's question, not too long. It is, yeah, it's not a lot longer. It is longer because we have to meet those design standards. And again, it's for a public safety benefit. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, it does lengthen that length of that culvert, but not uh, not double the amount. Um, it's kind of hard to see on this plan because there's a lot of lines, but you can kind of make out the old, you, you know, we're not lengthening it any further on the southern end. It's mainly on the northern end. It went from 14 foot long, 14 foot long to uh, 25 foot three. So it's another right. uh, about 11 feet and, and that's split on each side. So it, it's basically been extended uh, five and a half feet um, on, on each end. So yeah, you can- But again, that, that Southern portion was already channelized. Right, right, right. I, you know? I saw that from the pictures. I was just sort yeah, of thinking, so I, I'm just sort of trying to imagine in my mind, like before, channel total area and after channel total area. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I, I think Rick got to that. I, I think it's mainly an additional five and a half feet on the northern end of, of channelized area. Yep. It is yeah. channelized currently now with wing walls and, and a retaining. Right. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. So we're uh, no, no, I follow, I follow you there. It's just, we're going to be losing bank storage. You follow? So, so, and we're going to, I mean, I, I'm in favor of this project. I know we need to refurbish this road. Um, I just wanted to understand the impacts to the stream. Well, the, the wing walls, the wing walls were actually seven, uh, about seven feet. So the, the way we, we haven't gone out as far as the, uh, existing wing walls um, you can see those heavy that heavy black line and then where it and then where it turns where that riprap is that's that's the end of the existing uh, wing walls so so, so. Uh, yeah we you're right we haven't channelized it we're in, within the footprint of the channel yeah yeah and and again we are we are providing compensatory flood storage so I mean I know you made the comment Look. about losing storage right. and, and banquet, but we are providing it um, downstream. Oh, in the compensatory yeah. area. I haven't, I haven't, admittedly, I haven't looked too carefully at those plans at this, at, at this uh, preliminary stage. Um, I just want to ask. Chuck, sorry, Anika, I guess I'll, I'll pause you. Chuck, yeah. could you go to the next sheet? Because this may even answer the question. Um, this that actually identifies the permanent impacts pretty well, I think. Right. So, as correct me if I'm wrong, but the the permanent impacts is is the gray area. That's that's essentially what you've account helped accounted for in as part of the compensatory. Yes. Like that's yeah, the area that's behind the wing walls. I think it's tough to see on this screen, but I think you have the contour shown. I right. see. It. So, so if the permanent if the permanent change to the bank is in gray, is the um, the rock fill on the north side is that temporary? No, the the rock fill riprap on the north side is permanent. That's the 26 square feet of land underwater that will be, be filled in. The gray here is the, the bordering lands of the flooding, the floodplain impact. And the only reason why the bridge itself is gray is because the, the ceiling is slightly lower. So it's technically in the floodplain slightly. And that's why the underneath the bridge looks grayed out right now. And that's because the sole reason is to account for that three inches um the the the, the height of the of the culvert because the new culvert is thicker for stability purposes. Okay. I I have another question. Um I'm just gonna move on. Um so I think you said this I just want to verify what I heard. The the bottom of this 
culvert the, you know, the bottom elevation of this culvert that's going to be installed, that's going to be sunken or buried into the below the stream bed, correct? Correct. Yes. And I think you said two feet. Yeah, the, the, stream, the stream stand is called for two feet of, of, of bedding material. Okay. And um, in terms of um, any additional, yeah, maybe this is too much of a later down the road detail, but I thought I'd ask while I think about it, were you going to introduce any um, additional bedding material after construction? So we're going to replace it. So basically the um, box culvert is going to come in uh, U-shaped structure. So we'll get the bottom piece laid down and then we're going to put in the bedding material in there before we put the top half on the top to encapsulate it. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, I'm sorry if I didn't get that uh, detail. What is that bedding material that's going to go in? It, it is. It's a mixture of um, sand. Let me just get it here. Just going through my notes here of what sure. it materials. Yeah, it's consisting sand, silt, gravel, and cobble. So it is a mixture aggregate of all, all of all that material. Okay. Okay. Um, um, the what about if there's high like a uh, storm surge or uh, two things I was I had questions about were um, scouring and potential clogging. Um, I mean, Ryan, I think, you know, you know, every once in a while, there's a couple downed limbs in these, in this reach and uh, it clogs up the drainage. Uh, we primarily have issues with, with beavers yeah. more okay. upstream on the, on the natural embankment. Um, if you get a down tree and it does block up that whole area and then you get debris coming down after it, I mean, you're gonna get a blockage, but that's why we have emergency uh, maintenance response Order. for that. But, right. um, you know, as far as the flow, um, they've done calculations on the flow for the stream and we're providing uh, adequate, if not more flow, uh, Rick. Yeah. Volume. Yeah. Yeah. A little, so, little bit, little bit you know, more. even though we're a little, even though it's a, the, the ceiling's a little lower, there's more volume space because we, we meet that openness ratio. Um, again, uh, this is a great, this is a great picture right here. This is the sewer that goes straight through the bridge right now. Number one, we don't really like these. Uh, this is a possibility of having a major maintenance issue. It's a, it's a open crossing of a sewer. Um, right now it's encapsulated, but it only takes one, you know, massive log coming down here, jamming up against that. We're not going to have that issue. Um, so we're taking a lot of the catch that we already have in that box culvert out of the mix. We're getting rid of that potential um, SSO uh, by removing that, uh, by, by removing that and redirecting that sewer. So, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, it's a far better uh, uh, project than what we have out there now, far better. Yeah, and also um, this is a great picture of the stagnant of the water. Those are leaves, those are not flowing, those are just standing right on top of the surface water. So that, that's right. how stagnant <laughs> flow flowing this stream is. Yeah, um, question about the riprap, the rock fill on the north side. What, what purpose does it serve? What's it there for? Stabilizing that, wow. that that slope, that slope on that on that side is is uh, uh, a little steeper than uh, like one and a half to one. It's, it's closer to one to one, uh, so it's it's a smaller riprap, but to just just stabilize that that area. Is is there any way to design that north wall to make it more of a natural bank? or to angle out the wing walls or, you know, 
I'm just wondering if, if, um, you know, after the fact, there's any approach to this, to this rock fill area that can be more conducive to habitat or Chuck, that still fits the surface. I'm sorry, Annika. Uh, photos three and four kind of show that area fairly well uh, to show the steepness of the area. Right there, yeah, those, those two there. The, uh, the, I'm sorry, four is a better shot. I'm sorry, yeah, four right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've seen some steep walls fortified in with natural materials and um, more habitat friendly approaches. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not that large of an area and for scour and the steepness, uh, we felt that the riprap, um, you know, the hard engineering approach um, was at a, you know, the, the right approach to take on this spot. I'll just say, I'd like to see some natural alternatives. I know that there's some good engineering design that, um, you know, that doesn't just dump a bunch of riprap in to stabilize a slope. And I, I'd love to see an alternative. It's not, it's not your big, your big heavy rip rap, if that's what you, if, if, if that's what you are thinking. Um, it's more of like on the six inch size, six inch to eight inch max. Uh, so it is the smaller, the smaller elements not going to be the huge big stones are going to be uh, put down in there. Um, one of the reasons that the, the walls aren't angling out is because we're trying to minimize the impacts of the excavation work and stuff to the, the abutters, the property lines and things like that. So uh, that's one of the reasons why the, the wing walls are, are going parallel with the roadway. Right. Just, um... And Nika, I would just point out to it, you know, because I think I think you're right. If you know some angled wing walls may be able to compensate that, but that's also taking away floods, more flood storage. So, did you guys look into using uh, core fishing, um in this area, or maybe do riff wrap and then? And I know I've talked to Ryan about this before and it's gonna come up at some point in the conversation is that erodes after a while, but maybe <clears throat> you could do a hybrid method where the riffraff was lower down on the bank, closer to the water. And then above that, instead of uh, at some point, at some elevation, you're gonna use those core fascines and um, just maybe plant some willow in that and hopefully it'll take. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? I used to call those uh, quarry logs, but. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I know, I know what you're, <clears throat> I know what you're referring to and we've, uh, we've discussed using that in certain locations, Chuck. Mm -hmm. I think in, in this instance, we, we tried to take a balanced approach on this, on this uh, without getting too far out of scope for our bridge project and application with this mass DOT um, and having um, taken away from flood storage and also impacting the um, existing driveways and the residents longer or more than we need to. <clears throat> We're not putting a lot of riprap in. Again, what is it, 26 square feet? It is. It's, yeah. It's this um, kind of like this area here, right? Yeah. Yeah. On, it, it, is, it is necessary to have, I, I, I think by the time you get something to, to grow in there, it's very steep. There's a lot of erosion already on the sides. Are you going to bring it all the way up to, it looks like you're bringing it all the way up on this other, on this other plan that you're. Um... See, really the riprap is going in the water, so to speak. So it's really, uh, right. yeah, it's more in the water than it is along the bank. Um, we go back up to the to the first shot. The other one. First plan. Just the first sheet there. Yeah, right there. So the bank is the pink line. 
that's the flagged bank line. So the dashed pink is the bank that we flag. So the riprap is sort of going interior of that in the water, um, just for scour protection of the water itself along the bank. So it doesn't yeah, it's in, too far it's in the bank, here. but if we're on this, the bank is the first break and slope and we're up in, sorry, let me get the, let me get something to draw with. It was a little tough too, because the bridge- Are we up here? Extends almost out to see the, the end of the wing walls. The new bridge is going to extend almost to that area. Yeah. Yeah. So the, there's like the, the limit of the new bridge where your pen will just was. So, um, so this is the break and slope on this side. I, I understand that this is all going to get redone, but we don't have a picture below that. So that whole area below that red line is going to, is going to be filled with riprap and no, the way it's flagged, we're tying no. into the, the corner of the, the, the wing wall. Yeah, right there, we're, we're tying, yeah, exactly. That's the bank there. Okay. Out there, yeah. Just to be clear, that's the that's where you guys are gonna, that's where you call on top of bank. Yes. Probably something over here. Yep. Yeah, Chuck, you can almost see that from the street view. Um, driving through pretty clearly. Yeah, I don't think we have a decent shot of that side, that upstream. Yeah, we don't have a. Yeah, that's about it right there. The number 11 there is the best shot. Or, that was my question. If you're keeping it that low, that's. I don't I don't know what else you could do. That that seems there's a lot of natural above that. Above that line. I guess I'm kind of wondering though, I mean, if the velocities are that low, your design calcs still require riprap on the downstream end? Rick, maybe you can speak to that mass DOT in order to get the apportionment for the small bridges program. I believe the, the spec is sort of riprap. Is that right, Rick? Or? Yeah, it's it's the it's the one it's it's no, I mean we, we it's it's a little stabilization. It, it's really it's just stabilize stabilizing the bank really it's not not even have to do with with uh scour or anything it's just at that at that slope and, and we've used this on on uh, other recent projects um the, the same same thing we had the same kind of slope and material and stuff so um Yeah, um, um, I guess I'm a little confused because the picture I'm looking at here on the screen has a small portion of riprap. However, the gray scaled part underneath is a, is a larger portion. So because I think we're, I think, we're extending I think, the culvert. So we're, we're into the flood storage. That's I'm sorry, Ryan, would you please repeat that? We're that that culvert is extending. So we're impacting the flood storage. So that's what the gray is. No, I meant the no, gray. No, no, no. no. I, so symbol. so I, I Chuck, Chuck pointed out this correctly. I, I, I think, and guys, uh, maybe this is what needs clarification. So the black hatched riprap area that's riprap in the stream below water but but you're continuing that riprap up the slope based on the limits that that chuck you know the limits of rockville you can see the, the leader right there so the the 26 square feet at my my interpretation of the drawings that you're showing us the 26 square feet is is that's what's in the existing stream but the rock is continuing the rest of the way up Nika, that's yeah, that's what you're speak. asking, right? Oh, all right. I, I, I okay. I, I see. I see your limit. I see it. Right. So the, those were my questions. I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm done for now. If I, anybody else. 
Okay. No questions. Dave? Oh, I don't have anything. Carl? Nope, we're good. Uh, Martha? I don't know if that's the order, but that'll be the order now. No <laughs> questions. Uh, John? How's that? Any questions? Nope. Uh, Nicola? Yeah, uh, just one. Um, it's a much more general question um, that steps away from the details uh, as much for the record as anything else, but I was curious whether less impactful alternatives were considered, um, such as just converting this to a pedestrian only bridge or not widening it given the residential nature of the neighborhood and that both sides of the brook have access to um, Salem Street. Uh, one, if under the small bridge program, we're not allowed to keep it this size, we actually actually have to widen it out to 22 feet. That, that's correct, right, Rick? Yes. Yep. And then uh, two, we wouldn't want to get rid of this because yes, there is access, but it's, it's dead end access. Um, this creates more of a through way. Um, I know public safety would want to have all three bridges open if they have their, their choice. Um, it also increases mobility through the neighborhood for deliveries, oil deliveries, school buses, things of that nature. Um, it doesn't divide the neighborhood um, if we would just have a footbridge. So um, those alternatives, although we could have looked at them, um, really didn't constitute themselves for a replacement of the roadway bridge. Um, okay, thank this, you. I think in this area, um, I think Ryan, you explained it to me, there are two bridges that are working and there's three in total. And no, incorrect. There's, there's only one, one bridge that's working. There's only one bridge that we're, oh. This is, okay. this is the current bridge. This oh, I was the counting the working. area going over past the uh, Cumberland Farms as a bridge, but that's not oh, one of these. That, okay. That's technically, I guess that's technically a bridge. Um, yeah, no, but it was, yeah, I, I understand. So the other two aren't working. This one is an active travel way. So. Correct. That makes, that makes a lot of difference in how I look at it. Um, so I, I think that um, one of the things I, I'm, I'm still a little unsure of where this riprap is going. And I know it's not a lot um, of area, but maybe we could get uh, a, a little bit better detail on where, you know, what's happening, how high it's going and what's, what's above it as far as we're going up the slope. And, that's that's something I'm I would ask for, or maybe just a better explanation. I have that picture up again. We yeah, have it here. It's this, not if you go back to that plan uh, that we had before. Um, right. So this plan shows these black areas, but then it has this. That's why I zoomed right. in on it. it seems yeah. like it's. And and there's still slope. There's there's still even slope more slope going up to, uh, within a foot or so of the back of the of those posts for the bridge rail. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the contours aren't shown here, but there's, there's still s slope going down. So th there's a little bit of slope there that doesn't have it. Um, I, I don't know if we can, if maybe we can, you know, maybe we can smooth this out, get, you know, that curved piece right where the arrow's pointing. Um, you know, that's probably following the contour I think, but you know, maybe we can lower that down a little bit, but we, we can look at that, I guess. Um, yeah, the, the, second, the second sheet of this does show that, that um, little bit of fill, and then there is topo topographic lines on that plan. Um, so if you wanted to go to the second sheet here, it's the next page. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so we, we got the little shrubs there and stuff that, that uh, with, with, with that uh, couple of things there. 
um, just before the rip wrap starts at the top. Right, so it's it's in back of the, the uh, guardrail and it, you've planted it, here's this hatched area, bloom and seed restoration, and then just below it. And I think what we're, what everyone's saying is, in a way, I guess what we're saying is, how did you determine that height? And can it be brought down a little bit and we could get more restoration area? I don't know if you could bring it down a foot or two foot, or if you can't bring it down at all, what the, how the, what the process was to decide that it came up, you know, at, at this height, which is right here. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. It's just one, one comment that I hear that I think the commissioners are keep going back, back on. Um, Chuck, um, just to follow up with a question, um, do, um, do the designers happen to know what the standard flood stage elevation is for this stream? Because that might be, you know, a good concept in terms of, you know, when there is flood stage well, flood, in this, uh, the, you know, what flood, is that elevation? It, it's right up to the underside. It's, um, it, 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 it's right up to the underside of the, of the deck. Um, All right. The hundred, the hundred year flood. So that, that's, that's, so it's right, it's right up high there. So that's. And the know. new deck is going to be lower. So it's in the hundred year flood elevation. Right. right. The new deck was in about three inches into it. Uh, yep. So what's going to happen to that road? Heaven forbid if we have, what's going to happen then during the next hundred year at post construction. It's gonna to overtop the road. Uh, well the hydraulic analysis for the hundred year condition, there's no there's no overtopping of the roof. It just increases velocity. Yeah. I mean the history have you guys experienced this road um, flooding out like that in past storms or I can't no. remember. I'd have to no, ask we've that. gotten it we we've gotten it We've gotten pretty close to the bottom during the Mother's Day uh, storms, and that's probably the worst I've seen it since I've been around. But um, again, yeah, again we're we're increasing the volume, the size, the space underneath. We're getting rid of the constriction that we have down there. I don't. I mean, it's going to be better yeah. condition than it is now. Right, and the, the, no, the no rise evaluation we did, it actually lowered ever so slightly by about 0.1 feet. So, uh, so it actually lowered. So there is, you know, it, uh, it, so I, I think that's a function of, of us making the structure uh, a little bit wider than what's there now. So it's probably, I think, the reason we carried that rip wrap up. I, I mean, basically, it's it's going up to the uh, where, where the wing walls end uh, and carry up to that point. Uh, you know, maybe we can carry that sort of to that 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 little curve as it curves. You know, maybe we can kind of start sloping that, taking the curse off that kind of round round bit that affair that's going on there, and and and. Uh, do something with that and we can look at. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. So just just one follow up question. I promise I'm almost done. Um, so um, Richard, you just mentioned that the replacements could be a little bit wider. This bridge is 10 and a half feet wide. The existing is the existing is like uh, it varies between 10 foot, 10 foot three. Okay. Okay. 
So it is going to be slightly like geometrically as you're going upstream to downstream, it's going to be, you know, a couple inches wider. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, it's uniform. This is uniform, but 10 foot six. But just a couple inches shorter. Uh, correct. Yeah, the, the, the slab, the, the pavement is right on top of the structure. Um, and, you know, and actually, I, I, I don't think, um, so I, I think it's pretty thin on the existing structure. So, and, you know, with, with this span and the, the vehicle loads we have to design for, uh, the thickness of this uh, structure is, is 10 inches, a little bit thicker than the existing structure. So that, that's why we're, and, and oh, and our, and our pavement thickness is, is a standard but it's, it's min, the minimum standard. Um, so, and, and uh, we, we adjusted the profile a little bit, raised it up a little bit, but in order to have uh, the, you know, proper transitions and, and, and drainages and things like that. We, so yeah, it's, 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 it's going in a couple of inches into the, uh, um, low, lower than it was before. Somebody better continue this before I ask another question. Yeah, let's say Scott. Well, I, I want to give Scott the opportunity. <laughs> Scott, do you have any questions? I don't. Thank you, though. All right. Um, I, at, at this point, b before we have any other the comments, I mean, I, I think from what I'm hearing is uh, particularly on the, the north side, the downstream side, um, we want to hopefully you can look at a little bit more into what could be done with that riprap. Um, and, and what exactly that is. Um, Chuck, did you have any other items? Um, I'm just writing this down. Uh, uh, can you go to the commission first and then I'll then look through my notes. I didn't hear what you said. I said go, uh, you could go to the commission first, but- yeah. um, Any comments, so any comments from the public? <clears throat> I'm I'm hearing no comments from the public. Uh, make, let me make sure there's no other comments from the commission. No other comments from the commission. Chuck. So right now, right now, my notes are just about the uh, five to ten day forecast, and um, and uh, the riprap, and then the tree location, which um, I like on the plan. And, but <clears throat> just wanted to get, uh, I don't know if there's uh, something on the plan that we could look at tonight, but just to see some detail on how they're being planted, because you are, um, it looks like you're taking some out from the slope it is, and then you're planting them in that area. And I wanted to make sure that the right trees are going in and they're going in uh, with enough detail in the planting part of that so that they'll survive because it's not an easy place to plant trees um, on the bank or next to a, a river that could actually flood them out. So that's just something we either talk about at the next meeting <clears throat> or I'm not sure. Do you have plans on that? A detail? A detail on the, no, no. On the pl a planting detail, no. Okay. <clears throat> I'll uh, just contact, uh, I, I, I did receive something from uh, one uh, developer once on this and I'll just send you that information and maybe you could, you could use that and then say that that's exactly what you'll do or um, you can modify it somehow. Sure, so thank you. It just, it just shows how to plant on a slope. Okay, that's all I have. <clears throat> Ryan, I'll, I'll ask, I got one, I guess one other question. What's the timeline on, of this year? What's the plan for when this goes out to bid? Um, um, well, that's kind of a moving target with the situation we're in right now, but as it is now, um, if we receive the order of conditions and things move forward, we're aiming for um, 
the dry season somewhere around August. Am I off on that, Rick? Is that still the schedule? Yeah. 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 So that's ideally where we're looking for construction to begin. So, um, you know, bidding probably two months prior to that. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's, you're, you're looking to select someone by June um, to make sure you've got time. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in around that time frame, end of June, um, we'd have okay. to award somewhere around there. Okay. If it hasn't brought up, been brought up already, can somebody please point me to the mitigation details? You have a uh, mitigation sheet. Uh, that's that third page on the light um, set of plans that I provided. That one. And you said it was in a different area or is it right next to the? No, it is in a different area. It's further um, upstream up towards the, um, the rotary. The, the bridge we see on there is a different bridge, right? It is, that's the east bridge we call it. And we're working on the yeah. west bridge. Yeah. Okay. So that's the bridge that's currently closed is the east bridge we call it um yep so if everything goes well and we get another grant we might be back for that one good, good luck yeah so at, at this point um do i hear any other questions from the the commission um can you, can you see the two areas yeah, I do. I do see them. Yeah. So, so that requires, so that mitigation area, it looks like there's some regrading. There's going to be some removal of bank. Not of bank itself, just the contours. The bank is further below the 80, um, well, there's no bank impact there. Isn't that the top of bank? If you scroll down a little ways, um, there, see all, the, all those contours there? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's above, the, uh, above the bank. And how much material do you need to take out of this area? I'm not, I don't have a number on that. I don't believe yet. Uh, how much cubic yardage you're saying? How much is coming out? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to yeah, not, not to, I wasn't trying to throw you a curveball, but it, it, it just seems like from what you're doing, you're just, I mean, in each elevation, well, you're going to excavate and yeah. bring it down just a little Sorry, bit. Like, yeah, it's like a foot. It's a 394 cubic feet. Yeah, yeah. It's very. Um, yeah, that's that's right. We did calculate that. Um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know the fact we have a no rise certificate, um, but you know to meet the letter of the law with the compensation floorage that we have to provide it. So, it, um, you know that's sort of where we're at here. Uh, Besides, no, that, I, I, I understand that. Yeah. There's probably going to be some herbaceous planting as well as those trees. Yeah, on the left side there it says loam and restoration. Loam and seed. Restoration uh, seed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I said before, the area is not very well vegetated with shrubs or trees, and so we're going to be putting in a bunch of more shrubs. Um, very invasive, viney, uh, very sparse. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely going to be an improvement. So you're putting in shrubs? Yes. Where so, are those? Those are the other smaller blobs, not the stars. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, those. Okay. Okay. Great. 
All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, so, do I hear a, a a motion then? Don't everybody speak up at once. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> does the commission move to I think uh, continue the public hearing of two seven zero dash zero seven three zero? Track Road Bridge Replacement 2, 513, 2020. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Yeah. Great. Mike, we need a second. This should be like a bell. Second, Carl Sacconi. <laughs> Great. So Nika Scanlon and right. Carl Sacconi uh, move that forward. Mike Flynn, uh, I'm in. Favor, uh, Anika. In favor. Dave. Dave. In favor. Carl. In favor. Martha. Did we lose you, Martha? I think she's on mute. Maybe. There. Mm -hmm. Unmute. There. In favor. All right. Thank you, Martha. And John. In favor. All right. Great. All right. All right. Thank All right. Thank you. you. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right. All right. Sorry, let me figure out where we are now. Page 10, old new business. Thank you. Into the old new business. Uh, certificate of compliance for 26 Mile Post Road. Uh, this was a request for satisfactory closeout of the order conditions 270-0697, uh, DIMEO. Chuck, uh, do you have a, a summary of the current status? I do. Um, I also just, so just start. Um, so uh, the engineer Jack Sullivan, can everyone hear me? Did it? The engineer Jack Sullivan went out to the property on October 10th, 2019, and conducted a site inspection and found that the site was substantially in compliance with the order of conditions. The Ngong pool, walkway, and landscaping were constructed as per approved plan. This is what Jack was noting on his uh, letter and his as-built plan. <clears throat> noting that the only deviation from the plan was the masonry retaining wall and the aluminum fence along the northwest portion of the pool uh, that encroached into the 25 foot wetland zone. The commission conducted a site visit and discovered that the approved plan and the as built plan did not resemble one another. This was discussed with the owner at a public meeting and final, um, a final site visit was set up with the commission, commissioners Martha Moore and commissioner Kyle Sacconi. As we reviewed the site on that date, um, it was discovered that two dogwood trees and a row of blueberry bush bushes along the 25 foot Z and V line, which is right in back of where Kyle's standing along the uh, aluminum fence, uh, were never planted. Um, where the slope flattened out, four shrubs had died off during the winter. Um, the group discussed eliminating the row of blueberry bushes originally proposed to be planted on the 25 foot Z and V line and move new shrubs to the first break and slope. And that's where the red line is and the blue dots in front of it. The first break and slope 
by removing the last row of sod along the steep um, along the steep bank, then fortifying that area with geotech fabric to prevent erosion and planting that area with 16 shrubs, eight mountain laurel and eight holly. Lower down on the slopes, an additional inkberry and two three inch caliper dogwood trees were, uh, were be planted. We discussed helping the transition from lawn to intermediate use area to natural area, creating a succession of habitats. Um, at this time, Jesse, I hope you got back on the line. I saw that. Um, do you have anything to add uh, or elaborate on on this um, on that site walk or anything else that you've thought of since then? No. Can you can you hear me? So I I lost picture. Yes, I'm we certainly sure can hear you. Yep. Yeah. Nope. I agree with everything you you Carl and uh, Martha said that day. I have no issues with that at all. Uh, the one thing I didn't uh, discuss is the um, the 500 pound elephant out in the uh, in this picture here is that uh, trampoline. We were told on our site visit that that trampoline will either be moved or or put out in the trash, um, yep. but it's not going to be uh, in that area anymore. I confirm. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yes. I uh, okay. I don't know if Carl or Martha would like to um, elaborate on what uh, we discovered out there. Maybe some detail I missed on the plants. I think you had it all. That's Martha. Yeah, I think it was pretty uh, together. Pretty pretty good summary. Okay, so at this point we've come up with a an additional plan. Um, uh, I think that we would obviously wait until this is planted before um, moving forward. I mean, that would only make sense. Um, but at that point, if, if this work is done, um, I think that we have a year um, on survivability on the plants. So by next spring, we could be signing off or maybe the commission has a different idea on that at this point. I mean, no, I think that's, that's right in line, Chuck. I mean, my, my hope would be, I, I think if Carl and, and Martha are comfortable and, and you are comfortable with that, that approach, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I'd like to see it get in and then I really don't have any other issues. Um, anybody else? Hey, Chuck, it's Jeff. They do have one question. Do I need to do another amendment to the deed? Uh, um, you don't have to do anything else um, except that when we do finally sign off, um, yep. even if this hadn't happened, you would have had to record the certificate of compliance at the Registry of Deeds. But outside okay. of that, which was always part of this uh, process, you, you don't have to do anything additional. Okay. And, and ultimately you want to record that anyways, because uh, otherwise someday you're going to go to sell your house and somebody will say you never actually finished. Um, right. Yep. So. Got it. I have so. a question, Chuck. Do we have to sure. approve a minor plan change for the, uh, the fence and the masonry wall? Um, so the way we handle minor changes, there's two ways to do it. And I think we're, we're at the second, the second way, um, at this point in this project is because it's, it's basically finished. It's in place. So contractors, when they want to do stuff, they're told in our order of conditions to come to us if any changes are happening, but some of these changes don't always get to the commission and the commission will handle it within the as built process. And that's why Jack um, highlighted those two differences yep. in the plan for the commission to look at at the end of the day. So it's basically incorporated through this, you know, as built plan certificate of compliance process. Um, 
it's, and, and again, we do it the other way to have them come in and say, look, I'm going to make a change because then we don't slow them down like we did at, at right. on this, on this site. So that that's yeah. why you would want to come to the commission and, and get a minor plan change and, and then just get your certificate of compliance when you're finished. So, so um, it's Chuck, a long winded answer Chuck, to say you, just, you don't you need just, to. You just, you just, you just played Jeffy from Family Circus and the Boston Globe and went all over the, the play yard and you never answered my question. That could have been simple, yes or no. Do we have to approve a minor plan change, yes or no? Well, I don't know, uh, Jeffy, but uh, I think Je Jeffy's saying no. Family no. Circus, no. Boston Globe, when Jeffy Jeffy's, goes up next Jeffy's door. Jeffy's saying goes, no. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, I mean, Chuck, I don't know this needs a vote at this point. Well, uh, it doesn't. It, well, yeah. you have to, it doesn't need a vote, but you have to yeah. agree to I, the I, to change. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, if, if anybody has um, concerns with the current approach, you know, I, I think that's we'd want to hear it now. But but otherwise, you know, I think we have a path to to get them to closure. Okay. All right. Great. Well, All right, Jesse. Jesse. Uh, can you right, let thanks, me know? Guys. When that's planted, just send me an email. Yeah, are you gonna get send me that email summary of every every item? Of, there was that fabric piece that I'd want to share with my landscaper. Every, now that we've, uh, yeah, I'll send you exactly what I uh, summarized at the meeting just now. Yeah, and my goal is to get it done this spring if I can, if he's available. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Um, we're don't need to talk about the dumping dumping uh, this meeting. We'll, we can talk about it May 13th. Um, the emergency permit, there were none. Uh, enforcement order at Perfecto. Sounds like they are continuing to follow the order. Um, and, and we haven't had any issues. I haven't seen any issues. No reported issues to you, Chuck. Right. I think uh, maybe um, Dave or... Um... Can't remember who else brought it up a lot, but I know Dave uh, Panette often brought it up. I, maybe Mike, you were the other person. Uh, yeah. Might want to. Certainly stop not needing to work anymore. I'm seeing, yeah. I've seen no non compliance issues, but there's, <laughs> they've been, you know, not taking anything other than to go orders, you know, for a couple of months now. So. No. Yeah, but I, I haven't, my, my new route to work is past uh, the, the shop and for two months now, every time I drive by, I look over and the fence is up with the rope. So yep. it seems like he's definitely been trying or doing it. Yep. All right, good. So uh, I, my uh -huh. point was uh, it should be looked at and we need to, uh, you know, is at some point we're going to um, uh, end or resolve the enforcement order. So maybe take uh, a look between now and the next couple of months and, and, and decide whether this is going to stay in place or uh, we're going to eliminate the enforcement order. So, all right. Is the, okay. is the plan that went through the planning board that changed all of this paradigm, is that off the table? Are they just not going to do that anymore? So I've, I, I, you know, and I'm, I'm going to keep it short, Dave, but um, I, I don't think the owner has the appetite to do that plan anymore. Right. And the planning board, from what I've heard um, from the owner, won't won't modify the plan again. So he's stuck with what he, what he first went to the planning board with. <clears throat> they won't do any modifications. And there's an element to this that has to do with engineering too and, um, and groundwater and storm drains. 
So, okay. All right. Bills. Moving along, we've got a bill from Horsley Witten for seven hundred fifty-eight and twenty-five. I move repay that. I second that. Chuck. Uh, I, I guess I'll just add. Is this this the last bill from Horsley? That would be the last bill, and there was there's just a little bit of change left from my calculations. I would. Um, <laughs> so we have that amount left in the account, and uh, I think that. Um, you know, this is money well spent. I think that Hoisley Witten did an excellent job and bent over backwards to answer all my questions and spent a significant amount of time on site to try to get this right. Agreed. All right. Um, sorry. To, so there was a motion on the floor in a second. Um, uh, I, by Flynn, I'm in favor. Anika? In favor. Dave. I'm in favor. Carl? In favor. Martha? In favor. John? In favor. Okay, great. Uh, and then I think this is the last item we had minutes. Uh, didn't everybody have the chance to review the minutes from February 26th and March 11th? Uh, any comments? Nope. If I'm hearing none, uh, do I? Can I hear a motion? I make a. I David Panette make a motion to approve the minutes of two twenty six two thousand twenty. Second, uh, Carl Sacconi. Second. All right, Mike Flynn is in favor. Anika. In favor. David. In favor. Carl. In favor. Martha. In favor. John. In favor. Great. Uh, was that just the, the 26 that you did there? Yep. Okay. I may, I did about, make a motion to uh, well, approve the minute. <laughs> well, no one said they had any. We brought both of them up. No, we only brought one up. And now we're doing the next okay. one do that it was both of them what do you mean it was both of them i only had one on I the screen both. It, 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 mike said, said both. both of them he said review 226 and 311 minutes he said both of them mike you got to stick to the script <laughs> okay <laughs> i think it's past both your bedtimes no <laughs> that's why on this that's why one. The, the script helps <laughs> All right, so here's the second one. There's no, okay, I don't know if that does say that. All right, Mike, go ahead. <laughs> does, do I hear a motion? I move we approve the minutes of March 11, 2020. I David Panette second. Uh, Mike Flynn, I'm in favor. Anika Scanlon, Anika? in favor. David Panette, in favor. Carl Sacconi, in favor. Martha Moore in favor. John Sullivan in favor. Excellent. All right. Uh, I think that's it. I think that concludes the meeting. Chuck, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I don't have any, you know, it's just uh, to let you know that it's uh, everyone at town hall is working really hard you know, obviously remotely to try to keep whatever, uh, whoever comes in with questions or applications uh, running uh, the best, the best we can. And we've put it in, put in these um, measures that help and the, and the process is working and uh, the town went out and got everybody laptops and we're signing in from home. And I think that they uh, uh, meet enough they met a whole bunch at the beginning and they're probably meeting as as much now uh to make sure that everyone's uh, requests are taken care of and our it department has been uh really outstanding and uh, helped me out a lot as far as everything i had to do as far as putting things together for this meeting which as you can imagine broke down 
uh, just before the meeting, but they were able to help me set it all back up again. So that's all I had to say. And I, and I know it probably uh, people are wondering, you know, what's going on, but we're, we're keeping town hall open um, for, uh, for permits. It's not open to walk in, but there's an, the ability to pass in a permit through contacting the building department through uh, emails and whatnot. So that's that's all I wanted to say. And the same thing with the conservation department and the plan. No, Chuck, yeah, and, and I guess what I would just add to that is, you know, to, to all, everybody that's here, you know, I appreciate, you know, obviously we're all in a situation that's unique and, and difficult. You know, I'm, Chuck and I have had this conversation, but, you know, it's important that we have these meetings um, because there's certain projects and, and things that that need to occur. So, uh, you know, it, it'd be easy for everyone to say, well, the, the governor's given us approval to, to just say we don't need to have it and not have it. But there's there's other people that, that rely on think this these meetings occurring and things getting done. So uh, thanks for all of you kind of hanging in and, and dealing with a, a unique uh, unique way to hold the meeting, so. I think it went well. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, gonna... before we sign off, there's still you need to do that, go through that vote. I yeah. Do I hear a motion we... to adjourn? I move that we adjourn the meeting. Martha Moore. Carl Sacconi, second. second. <laughs> Mike Flynn, I agree. Anika Scanlon, agree. Carl Sacconi, agree. Oh, Martha Moore, agree. John Sullivan, agree. The meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Hey, John, my office still Hi. stands. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Find the stop button. This is, yeah. Okay.